What's up everybody, Leginus here with another guide. So today we are going to be talking about the Beastmaster, or better known as the Animal Tamer, Dexer. So, this is, finally I am making this video, I know it's been a long time coming. Earlier this year I started playing this character as a Dex Bard Tamer, um, and we were showing it off, and then, oh baby, Outlands released the taming update. We dropped Barding like a bad habit and went pure into that Dex Tamer, that ultimate Malay Beastmaster build. And it has been crazy. So, strap in. This is going to be a long one. There's a lot to talk through with taming. I know. I'm going to try to cover as much of the mechanics as I can think of. If I missed anything, I apologize. Uh, but please, please, please check out the comments down below. Le let me know. If there's anything that I missed, come hit me up on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Leginus. Link is in the description below. I'll be streaming all month long for the upcoming uh, Gilded Lantern. I'm sorry. Yeah, Gilded Lantern event. I thought I said Torch. Uh, for, and I'm also farming for, uh, for an upgraded house. So feel free to stop by, but let's get on with the show. Hit it. All right, we have a lot to cover in this guide. So as y'all can already tell by the time link below, this is going to be quite the adventure. So starting off at the opening section right after this, we're going to start talking through the overview of the Tamer. Is this build for you? We're going to talk about the pros, the cons, and all the stuff in between. Uh, so strap in. This is going to be a good one, guys. This is going to be really, really good. I think y'all are going to like this. This build will output more DPS than you, your body has room for. Absolutely. We're going to be doing so much damage. Uh, you should be able to farm without a command aspect. Easily, easily 100,000 gold per hour of farming. If you put your head down and you play like there's nothing else to play. We're not talking about Moz for deep dives. We're talking about Aegis Keep going down to level 3, the easiest dungeon of them all. Smashing some Aegis, maybe some Dark Mire. Any dungeon that you like that doesn't have a whole lot of AoE in it. Go ahead, easy 100,000 gold an hour character right here. We're going to go ahead and give you some things to consider as well. Um, as you start off your guide, as you know if you watched my backstab video, while you're leveling, always be gathering. Remember the ABGs, the always be gathering. All right, now let's break down what we're going to talk through today. <clears throat> we're going to start going through your journey. Like all of my videos, I'm going to make a video as if you have never played UO, or if you played a little bit of UO, you're new to Outlands, and you've got to get it all set up. So first things first, we're going to go through character creation. Then we're going to go through the user interface setup. Feel free to skip through it if you've already got your UI set up. Then we're going to go through all the scripts and the macros and loosely explain how to play the character. Don't worry, we're going to explain it a little bit as well later in the video as well. I explain it in two spots. Then, after we've got the character stood up and you understand the basics of how to play a tamer, we're going to get into skill leveling. There's a lot to taming. A lot to taming. So please remember, there will be links in the description below to the third-party uh, sites that I use and all the scripts that I use. So we're going to go through a very deep uh, dive on how to tame, all the taming spots, websites to go to, macros to install, all that fun stuff. In addition, <clears throat> in addition, then we're going to get to becoming the Beastmaster. I'm going to show you all the in-game footage. We're going to walk through how to play this. Um... I think y'all are going to be really excited. I fired up the test server and I made a brand new character, brand new codexes, and we went right into Aegis Keep 3. Zero playtime on that character right in Aegis Keep 3. No aspect turned on. We did have our codexes, but none of them were leveled up. And equally, we had no mastery chain links. We had no good gear. I think we took down some gold weapons and that was it. And we were soloing everything in Aegis Keep 3. So I want you all to be able to create this character and immediately be able to start farming your gear. Start farming experience and start farming that gold. 
Will you make 100k an hour day zero? Absolutely not. Day two? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how much you play. Anyways, let's get into the guide. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Please be sure to like and subscribe. If you hate it, be, please be sure to dislike and subscribe. All right, cheers. All right, so it's time for that character to be created. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and click Next. Obviously, go through all the customization with the million features that you have in Outlands. Um, and let's just go ahead and type in a name. We're going to call it Aiming Legs. And we're going to go ahead and let's see here. We're going to make that a female. We're just going to do a Mohawk, clearly. Uh, maybe Braids? Buns? Buns. Ooh, big two. Obviously, this part doesn't matter, but who doesn't like to have a little bit of fun when they're making a video? Character name is too short. Aiming legs. Okay, okay, I don't know what happened there. All right, so what we're gonna want to do is go ahead and jack strength all the way up to the max. Don't worry about intellect; you don't really need it. Don't worry about dexterity. So we want to be super, super, super strong. We want to be able to punch trees without thinking through things uh, and regretting our decisions and then while at the same time not being able to dodge a rock. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and up both of these skills to 50. I personally am superstitious, so I'm gonna do 50, uh, 49, one. Um, call me crazy, but that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, so what we're gonna wanna do is for this, very important, we're gonna do animal taming. Then we're gonna do animal lore. And then we're going to do hurting. There it is. And we're gonna go ahead and hit next. Well, oh, we are in the game. So we gotta love what the game looks like when you first start off, don't worry. First and foremost, you've created your character and that's the first big step. Well, before everybody's ear starts to bleed, let's go ahead and just turn the sound off real quick, and we're going to walk you through the new player setup now. All right, so with that, let's get into it. First and foremost, we can go ahead and just ignore that because no one really cares. Uh, some of this will be personal preferences, so feel free to take what I have to say with a grain of salt, and we'll go through it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and expand this to eh, right here. A lot of people like playing like that. Move my paper doll off to the side. This right here. And we'll even uh, move this right here. There we go. Nice little, uh, nice little interface setup we got going on over here. Close this out. Didn't even do that. Move this to about right here. Alrighty. Aiming legs. Gotta love that. So. As we go through the setup, uh, for, from a new player perspective, we want to go ahead and get everything. I'm going to walk you through, this is what it's like to play on Linganus' account. And with that, because I was completely ill-prepared, what we're going to go ahead and do is fire up the game. And I'm going to cheat, because who can remember all these settings? And I'm going to lot on my character. Like, well, we're going to turn off the sounds of the game. And essentially what I'm going to do is we're going to walk through the setup on this character of a brand new character. See what it's like to go through all this for y'all. That guy was spinning to winning. And we're going to mirror the settings over here. All right, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and unclick. Uh, we'll click on the paper doll. We'll click on options. This is what brings up the option menu. Uh, just for viewer purposes, I'm going to uncheck the reduce frames per second when the game is not loaded, so that way you're not getting all the frames when I go back and forth. All right, which is a fun option to click on your main account anyways, but I highly recommend on alt accounts like crafters and stuff like that um, to have the, under video, to have reduce frames per second. I know what you're thinking. It's a 30-year-old game. Who really cares? Yada, yada, yada. It actually adds up pretty significantly, so don't hate on it. Of course, because it's a 30-year game. Why would it be optimized? All right. Now, let's run through these settings. All right, so over here in general, we're going to go ahead and turn on Always Run Unless Hidden, um, Auto Open Doors, Smooth Doors, and Auto Open Corpses. 
Uh, then we're going to go ahead and click on uh, skip empty corpses. We're going to leave this to both, and then we're going to scroll down from here. After this, this is a personal preference. If you like to see the bars underneath your feet, feel free. Um, this will add little show HP bars underneath people's feet. Um, you can do a little line if you like to see a health bar, or you can do percentages. That guy's spending it to win it. He just got back into you after like 30 years. He's like, I remember when we used to do this in Tram. Ah! All right. After that, I'm just going to leave everything else here under the default. Uh, what I do as well is I like to have the ores under the feet. This is my personal preference, um, honestly. And then I click the custom color, color, uh, custom color for party members. Mostly because this is the only way I can tell the difference between if there's someone in my party or there's someone in like my guild or alliance that happens to be nearby. So that's kind of what helps keep me honest from there. Um, we're going to scroll down. Uh, some of these are settings that you get from oh, uh, enabling the beta client, which I have enabled, so you may not see all of these settings. So if you see something that you do or don't have, just that or that I have and you don't, don't, don't worry. It's coming to the game here shortly. Or by the time you're watching this, it may already be in the game. All right, uh, really important. I don't like to hold Alt and right click uh, to close anchored gumps. Like if I combine, like let's say, uh, well, we won't use mine. We use like this person's health bar and this health bar. By default, I can't right click to close these. So I have to hold down Alt to close one. Unclicking this will allow me to close it. Um, then we'll do a close all anchored gumps when right click. So that way, instead of just closing the one, this will close all of them. Uh, we want to unclick standard gumps. Uh, what this will do is, I'm sorry, uh, skip, unclick standard skill gumps. What this does is if you're used to, when you click on skills on your paper doll, and you know, the good old journal. Everybody loves the journal. Journal, journal. You got all this fun stuff right here. I personally kind of, I grew away from that um, after doing this. So if you unclick that, and then hit OK. Yeah, you'll see the auras have turned on because I just apply. But what this does is this turns the old journal thing into this. Not everybody likes it, and I can respect that. The thing I like about this is you can do sorting. Um, you can sort by skill. So this way, this is showing you what you have. Um, things like that. It makes kind of a little of the, the usability uh, or the, the accessibility and just scrolling through stuff a little bit easier. But... If that's a personal preference. Uh, grid loot, I do uh, both. I like to see the old coffin um, uh, loot uh, windows, if you will, whenever you kill a monster. But I, they have an Outlands grid loot that I personally like. Um, I use the Outlands themed grid loot. Uh, it adds extra um, graphics to where you can expand some of the windows and stuff like that. It kind of looks nice. And then I'm gonna hold, uh, click hold shift to split items so that way I can drag and drop an entire stack of items versus having to split stack it by default. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about circle of transparency. I don't like it, but y'all are free to enable it. Uh, we do wanna turn on uh, show target range indicator so that way when you're casting a spell, it'll show, it'll show a little number by your mouse and you can figure out how, if you're about to click on something too far away. All right, uh, I'm just gonna roll through my setup. Uh, this right here is the um, drag and select. So if I wanted to do like this right here, what would that give me, right? Uh, like the behavior of what that feels like. So what I do is I have uh, the select all modifier instead of none. None means this is what just a normal click and drag, not pressing anything. I turn that to personally into control. Uh, the select players modifier, so only selecting players, I have to alt. Monsters modifier, since I'm mostly a PVM uh, shill, uh, I have set to none, so that way I'm only selecting monsters by my click and drag. I'm not getting all the players under the sun, stuff like that, right? And then I leave this to disabled. I don't even know what it does. Uh, here, I kind of like mine to uh, spawn like in the middle of my monitor towards the bottom part. For me, and y'all can play with this, uh, but this is essentially where your gumps will spawn. If you like them in that top left, old traditional style, have, have at it. Uh, but I kind of like this right here, so as I click and drag, haha, um, <laughs> because there's no monsters, as I click and drag, it'll be right about here. Um, obviously, 
This is gonna give you about the center of where the, your window is, and my window center is about right there. Um, in my actual game, my window goes all the way left to right. Um, so that should center them about right here. Anyways, so. Uh, that, let's just go ahead and put that back. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click anchored health bars, uh, use custom gumps. And I think everything else here is fine. And I want to say everything else here is fine. So we'll hit apply. I always hit apply when you change your menus. Um, I'll let you mess with the sounds accordingly. Uh, FIFA, uh, just a little advice. Uh, I don't know what New Outlands music does. Uh, I've never heard New Outlands music. Someone knows what that does. Love to know. Um, skipping over into video. Let's see here. Um, I personally like to lock my game window from the resizing just so like I don't accidentally do this right here in the middle of while I'm playing a game and I'm trying to like get to my inventory and I'm like, ow, oh, no. So thank you for what, it, what you will on that one. Um, right here, enable scroll mouse wheel. So this will allow you to essentially scroll in and out. Um, I like the upscaling, why not? Uh, light levels, again, personal preference. If you think the game is too bright by default, right, uh, you could turn on light levels and then label it here. So permanent nighttime. Um, I don't know what, I guess dark nights makes it a little bit darker, but I mean, like, again, it's weird because you control light levels. Um, we're gonna go ahead and turn, uh, I find the game a little bit too blinding, so I'm just gonna turn that down to, uh, I think when I play, I play on 17. Sorry. So I guess I play like this right here, so it's a little dim all the time. But it's it's your call. Alright. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Now that's about the same. Shadows, I uh, I have terrain texture turned all the way up. For me, I felt it added a little bit more. Um sharpness to, uh, to some of the drains and uh, anti-aliasing. I'll let y'all figure that one out. Uh, uh, some of the items I don't think look as good, so I just don't use it. Um, macros. So this is a personal preference. Um, I will have another video for macros, but I'll cover this one real quick because I don't personally play with macros for my character, but if you like to click spells, which I know a lot of people do, um, a lot of tamer stuff or pet control, it, you have to say things out loud, like all follow me, uh, all guard, all follow, all kill, stuff like that, right? Um, if you wanna create buttons for that, you can go to macros, click new macros, be like, follow, it's just, this will just be the name of the button, right? You can click the little thing right here, just drag and drop, or click create macro button. Button for follow. Uh, we want to say um, follow, follow me. Apply, and then I click it. Ah, there, there we go. All follow me. Ah, got to double click it. So there you go, all follow me. Uh, so you can go through this as much as you want to create your uh, your buttons. I personally won't be doing those. Um, all right, tool tips, I usually leave this alone. Uh, fonts, I technically have this selected and I use that's classic UO. Uh, I don't know what that does, I've done it. I don't know. Uh, speech, uh, this is how long the text lasts. Feel free to change that if you want. Uh, everything here is the same for me. I do have my speech uh, colored to like something like bright green. So that way, uh, hit apply. And then we'll go back to our macros and reopen that. So now you can clearly see that I'm saying something versus whatever that dim. I don't know white bluish looking text was that's the only thing I've changed all right combat spells so I do not like hold tab that's a personal preference um, 
I like to be told if I'm about to create a criminal action, so in combat, so I do this. If you're playing a red, you probably don't want that click because that's just going to fuck you over. Show buff durations, and why not have a bigger energy bolt? Alright, so for folks who have watched my stream and you've seen my nameplates and you're like, hey, why is all this stuff like different colors than this blue, gray, yellow, things like that, right? That is because I have right here in Notary Hues, I've changed the colors around so that it's more, for me, color friendly. <coughs> Again, personal preference, but if you want to know what the colors I have, I believe... For Innocent uh, is this color right here. Normal Brightness. Uh, friend is this color right here. Here, I think. Yep. And then Criminal Color is I take Brightness and I do two shades over. And then I click the second purple right here. And then can be attacked. Same thing, two pops over right here. I find this gives it like a good purple that's readable and not like overly dark. Uh, murder color, uh, I go with good old juicy red and not whatever this kind of pink looking red is. And enemy color, um, I do that as well. Although it's kind of funny because I think people talk about orange all the time. I don't really know the difference. Probably because I've got them colored. All right, scrolling down, uh, cast spells by one click has been enabled. So that would be if I click follow for one button, now it works. I was having to double click it, which is why I thought it wasn't working for a second. Um, you're welcome to mess with spell formatting if you want. And that's all I've got for here counters this is a personal preference i usually run three or four rows i always run 10 columns i run and then it pops up this little grid right here this is a really good way um just kind of leave it in the center to like add items right so if you want to put stuff to count like your potions your band-aids things like that um your veterinary supplies um, it's a really good means for for doing that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I guess equip this mace right here. We're not gonna use the shepherd's crook. I don't like fighting with two handers. Uh, all right, so that's counters. Um, info bar is this little bar right here. We'll take our counters and move it off to the side. And let's do. Uh, info bar, we're gonna add um, three. Three things to it, so we're gonna do uh, crime, we're gonna do follower, and gold. And let's say we make this one yellow, uh, we make uh, this one kind of tealish. Crime, we do our purple. Right? All right, so for crime, we're gonna do a criminal timer. So that way, if you do commit a crime and you go gray, this will tell you on your info bar in seconds how long until you go blue. Uh, for follower, we're gonna select followers. This will tell you how many uh, pets and available slots you have. We'll get into that later. And gold is gold. Hit apply. Now this is a little bit longer. So now you can tell you how much gold you have. Zero five followers. We're not a criminal, so it's a zero. All the good stuff right here. Feel free to play with this uh, by any means. Uh, interface. Uh, this one is, for me, very important because this is not going to happen for me. Um, I'm getting close to 40. Uh, not not on a high resolution monitor. So I'm gonna change the container scale to 165. Uh, I'll show you what that does. So hit apply. Now I've got a big old man bag right here. I can move all my stuff freely around in my inventory. Um, and then all these little small things are a bit too much for me. 
Um, you could go all the way to 200, and then it just looks like your old man winter in here and your inventory. I actually just increase everything by about 10% or 10, so I find to show you all a difference because I know that you're like, ah, that doesn't really matter. Like, it's going from this to about this. It's just a little bit more pop. You could probably get away with like maybe 25, and that's not terrible. Uh, maybe 20 for a sweet spot. Again, that's not terrible. Uh, but I play with 110. I just wanted a little bit bigger, uh, mostly to help with some of the small items, but I'll be honest, a lot of the times it still bothers me. So, I may have to actually uh, go back and look at doing that again. Um, override gump locations, remember every uh, container. Um, exclude your primary backpack, why not? Uh, I like the new reagents and the new gems just because they're easier to click on. Uh, some of the old reagents you can kind of click through, that kind of solves it. And this makes the gems look a little bit nicer versus all those little dots, but I know people who don't like the new gems. So. That's a personal preference if you want to turn that back off, that's where that is. Um, experimental, uh, I go in here and I default UO hotkeys. And I also, uh, or disable UO hotkeys, I need to disable the right click and life, uh, right click is auto move. You never want to be in a PvP situation and then you accidentally click both of your buttons because you, you know, you run with one and you click with the other and Lord help you if you held down both. And then your character goes, Richard Garrett, and you just fucking auto run right into the fucking monster packs. You're like, why is my character auto running? And, and then it's just like, and then you're done. Um, and you think your character bugged out because you don't realize or you forgot or you never knew to begin with it holding down Clicking both of those buttons at once turns on auto run and it doesn't turn it off So that'll save your life And yes, I died a few times in the making of that process All right, so let's just that name plates so getting back to this right here Alrighty uh, I have my nameplate says health bars. That's how I personally keep up with everything. Um, so we're going to click show as a health bar and then nameplates to be used as health bars. This one adds a little blue line. If you don't like the blue line, you can get rid of the blue line. All right. You don't need the blue line. So that's that difference. This one, although you're not seeing it, it will also make this bar turn red behind this uh, this little text right here. Like this faded teal gray teal will also start to go like this. The name itself will uh, it will always keep showing. It doesn't do that. Um, and then I have a personal one that uh, a personal filter that I create. I just call it a PVM. It cleans up a little bit versus showing all. Um, and this is what I recommend for everybody. Always, always, always click on gold doubloons. Um, essentially, if someone drops a gold pile on the ground and they think they're being clever with it in a dungeon by hiding it behind a wall or something like that, what you'd have to have circle transparency on. This will just put a fucking giant thing, uh, giant square like this right here, right here, and goes gold twenty thousand, and you're like ah. And then you don't even have to turn circle of transparency on. You can just click the nameplate and drag it, and it'll auto grab it for you. So you don't even need to see the gold to know there's gold there. You'd be surprised how many times I've walked in a dungeon and immediately had 30,000 gold in my inventory. All right. Uh, corpses. I'd like to know where my own corpse is. Uh, for special, I clicked on myself and party members. If you want to see your own followers, click on your own followers. I personally have. Uh, my health bars like this right here and then I've got like my followers underneath me is how I play so I have all of my stuff right here I don't want more bars up in the mix because especially if you play like me with five one slot pets it's just too much it's like six to eight bars depending on if it's a three mile pool and it just it looks like a mosh pit of bars so I don't have my own followers turned on um, monster mobile types. I have all of this selected. And then this is your personal preference. I have yellows turned off for me. Yellows are the, uh, the folks that are in town. Right here, right? Um, oh, sorry. So this is what your filter was originally. 
and then we trim it down to this right here. Let's go ahead and just move this out of the way. So this is what I do. Uh, I don't have it like this, so that way when I'm running around, I only see uh, kind of players and enemies. I have another one that is literally a clone of this that I just call yellow, and it's this with the yellow one, and I'll shift back and forth between it. But I'm gonna have it turned off for the sake of this video because that's probably gonna mess with me. Um, to mess with nameplates, hold down Control and Shift. You'll see them turn on and off. If you're like me and you want to leave them on while you play the game, you have to hold down Control and Shift while you're playing the game. It gets a little tired. I'm just joking. Uh, when you hold down Control and Shift, this little menu will appear. It was apparently in the top corner for me, so I'm assuming it's gonna be right there for you. See, if you move it, it'll stay there. Um, I like to click on this to keep open so my menu doesn't move. I just move it over here into some of the black space. So that way it's out of sight, out of mind, but I don't have, ever have to hit control shift again. Um, I then will click always active and then that's how that stays on. And now I'm no longer having to click on anything. Uh, depending on the time you watch this video, I know a lot of people, if they've been playing, they go, hey, I don't have this thing called prevent overlapping nameplates. That would be amazing. Because currently in the game right now, if there's a whole lot of people sitting in one area, all the nameplates will overlap and you can't see like the mob you're heading or your buddy who needs a heal. And you're like, oh my God, I don't see your health bar anymore. Bruh. And then he dies, which is usually what happens. Um, and let's face it, he was gonna die regardless if you could see that health bar. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Billy needed to die. But in the beta client right now, uh, they've got a new feature called Prevent Overlapping Nameplates. If you click this, it does wonders. A couple weeks ago, it was super buggy, and like the nameplates were like five inches above everybody's heads and like three inches to the right. It was fucking hilarious. Um, and then luckily, later that day, it got patched. So I don't know if people had to use that for very long. I had it for half of a day, uh, but it seems to be working perfectly fine on uh, on the main client, or I'm sorry, on the beta client now. So we'll go ahead and move this out of sight, out of mind. Cooldowns. Uh, there should probably be its own video on cooldowns, so I'm going to give you the rundown real quick. We'll click show cooldown gump, we'll hit apply, now you've got this thing called no cooldowns. Uh, I'll leave it right here for a second. Uh, we're going to create a, a bandage cooldown. All right. So essentially, if you want this, uh, we're going to click create new. We're going to call it bandage. Okay. All right. I like my bandage to be kind of this bluish white thing. I don't know. I think it right. Sure. Why not? Uh, and then we're going to hide when inactive and pause during world save. Pause during world save is very important. If you hide it when inactive and you hit apply, see right here, it just says bandage now. If we pick another one, we call it T T T T T, and then now you've got that right there. So there's a way you can see all of your all of your cooldowns, and if it's going, it'll just be like here it is, and then you'll see the thing moving. Uh, me personally, if you hide it when it's inactive, then you don't see it. And then you click this right here, and it just says no cooldowns. So personal preference, I know people who do it. It also looks like if you want to like have an isolated area on your screen, I didn't know you could do this, and I just discovered it while making this video. You can click and drag the the thing, and it looks like you can click and drag this. You can gump them together. Um, and I'd imagine this would light up whenever it goes on to cooldown, which it looks really good on black because then you can't even see it. So there you go. All right. Anyways, set up bandage. We're going to go to add a trigger and we're going to say, uh, you begin applying the bandages and five. Uh, and then I'm going to hit add a trigger. You begin using veterinary supplies. We're gonna hit five. This is very important. I'm gonna explain something real quick because I don't think too many people know this. So when you go into bandage your pet and you've got 120 vet, it takes five seconds. With the agility that you'll have, it takes five seconds to bandage your to bandage your pet. However, please keep this in mind. 
most of the time I'm bandaging my pet, so I want my cooldown to say five seconds. If you bandage yourself using veterinary skill or healing, it takes 10 seconds. 10 seconds, not five, 10 seconds. Your cooldown meter will still say five seconds. The game is not fucking smart enough to realize you bandages yourself versus a pet. It's only smart enough to say there will be a bar, it'll have a five second, uh, second runoff, it'll be this color, and if it sees this system message, which applies to you and your pets, it will run five seconds. The game is not saying, but the game's in five seconds. No, it takes 10 seconds to heal yourself, five seconds to heal your pets. You just have to mentally remember. However, we're going to get into it later and then probably in a second video. Veterinary supplies is five seconds no matter what because it's an AoE heal. Highly remember, if it's a sticky situation, use vet supplies to heal yourself and potions. But you heard it here and not in the other video. All right, this is how you set up cooldowns and that thus concludes the cooldown tutorial. And the options tutorial. Hit apply, hit OK, we're good to go. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and open the help menu. This is a new character stand up. You need to make sure you don't go screw yourself over. We're not gonna go into all these commands and all this bibble babble nonsense, but I'm just gonna run you through the smart things. So open up in case I forgot, hit help. It's the help menu. You're gonna hit commands. There's a lot of funness here. Explore it on your own time. Command menu, we're gonna go to mechanics. A lot of fun stuff here. Explore it in your own time. Mechanics. Oh, uh, we're going to go to page three of four. Prevent criminal healing. You want this to be prevented. You do not want this to be allowed. Prevent criminal looting. Prevented. What this does is by turning it on, you will not be able to open a corpse a monster or player that if you took loot from would turn you into a criminal. By default, you were allowed to do this because that's how you worked back in the day. You'd have to click on the target, see if that target is gray, red, which was lootable, or if it's blue, you would still be able to open it and loot it, but it would turn you into a criminal for like a minute. I think it's a minute actually. This right here will prevent you from looting that. However, just like we did with the follower button right here, right? You remember the follower button? It was the macro. We said, say, I'll follow me. If you go and create another one of these buttons and use the say command and you say open bracket prevent criminal looting and you create a button, you can click that button. And it will then turn this, whenever you say this out loud with that bracket, it'll turn it from settings prevented to allowed. So you can create a button to toggle this on and off. So when you're in dungeons, play with it prevented so you don't randomly grab some bullshit no worth item, turn yourself into a criminal, and all the people in the dungeon look at you laugh and kill you for free and take all your shit. However, when you see the dude next to you die who's probably got 100,000 gold worth of bullshit on him, and you're like, I don't have anything on me right now. I can risk it for the biscuit. You have a button, so you don't have to type this or forget about this or dive into this menu. You click it, you open his corpse, you take his shit, and then you're off to the races. Always remember, always be checking them bodies. All right, that's it for that I needed to show you all for this. There's some other stuff as well. I'm going to let you all get into that, but that's not directly important. We're going to move our button back over here. All right. Razor, everybody's dream. All right, so I'm going to click on new. Uh, <coughs> so I create a new profile on Razor. Uh, this shouldn't have any settings to it. And if it does, I apologize. Um, what can you do? All right, so I'm going to walk you through setting this up. Actually, I don't need to. I'll just probably just show you right here. All right, so this is what I have for my settings on Leginus. This is this is 
my main character right here. I'll just walk you through it instead of me clicking buttons. I think y'all are intelligent enough to do that. You made it this far. You, hell, you made it to YouTube. You know how to click on buttons. Unless some advanced AI just started playing this shit because you asked the damn thing to tell you about a cooking recipe and you're in a kitchen going, what is this game? It's enticing and I like it. I love an hour-long tutorial on how to play a game just through setting up its menu items. Oh my god, give me the pain, Dad. Alright, go to your options, click on your speech and messages, do whatever the fuck you see right here. Pause the video if you need to. Targeting and cues. Let's go. Boom. Look for any oddities. There's one thing that may be clicked and one thing that may be unclicked. If I see anything specific, I'll call it out. Um, make sure this range check last 12 tiles is unclicked. Essentially what this does is whenever you have a target, if this is unclicked, um, or I'm sorry, if this is clicked by default after you walk so far away, the game will forget that you have something targeted. So then if you run a script to then reinstant, like cast a spell against that target, even though you've already ran your script to target something into your cache, and you walk too far away, it'll clear that cache, and then you're gonna go, why am I fucking macro working this game? It's fucking stupid. This is clicked by default, just unclick it. Um, Copy whatever you see here and you'll win. Um, You may wanna think about block poison if, uh, block heal if target is poison. I run with it, I'm fucking crazy like that. Go nuts. Um, Display counter, I don't think I've done anything here. Under counters, explain this in the thief video. I'm gonna explain this here. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Unclick auto search new container. You ever pick up a box in the middle of a dungeon? You're like, what's in here? I'll check it out later. It may be explode, it may have an explosion trap, but can't fool me. I'm an experienced duo player. And then you pick it up to put it in your backpack to run off with it like a fucking little dick and then it automatically explodes in your mid hand and you're like, I double click on the back. Razor by default will auto open that container and look into it when you put it into your inventory. Unclick this and then you can pick up that dude's boom box and run the fuck away. That's right. So when you watch those Jester videos and he puts the boom box on the, on the, uh, on the uh, target, half those people who die it's just they die because they looted the boombox. They didn't open the boombox. They thought they are going to be silly about it and go, I'm too smart for this. I played Yu-Oh! back in the day. I know this trick. But I'm taking this shit. And then you take it and immediately die anyways. Because this is selected by default. And people know this and they play into it. Anyways, unclick it. And then take their fucking boombox and run away and go, thank you. And then go do it to somebody else. And then let their tinker get the count and while you walk away with the loot. Bandage timers. You got the drill. Whatever I did here. Overhead messages. I don't have anything for... Uh, except for you failed to resurrect is the only thing that really applies here. Um, I just look for the thing. You failed to resurrect. You can type that in right here and click add. I say res failed and I make it red. Cool. All the other stuff is for my other classes. Uh, waypoints. I don't even know what this does. Nope, don't know what that does. Um, make sure when you create your character, uh, if you don't know much about UO and its skills and how it works, I highly recommend on this menu, come into skills. If you, if you're watching this and you haven't left anything, and you're going like, damn, this is a good guide. I haven't even taken a first step, and I've already done so much. This is so educational. Do me a favor, guys. Go over here. And then set all locks. What you're going to do is you're going to go on this drop down. You're going to hit the button down. And then you're going to click set all locks. And what that did, it went to my skills. Ah, fuck. I did it on my goddamn main character. Hold up. Ha <laughs> ha. That, that would have been, that actually been really bad. That would have been so bad. Like, why did all my 120 skills just disappear overnight? Go to the right razor menu, and you shouldn't have had to open to begin with because you're watching a YouTube video on how to do this. Don't make it crazy. Go to skills. Click down. Set all skills. Now all my skills are turned down. I will walk you through, if not this video, then the next, all the skills that you need to turn up. But since you're doing this right now with me, you may as well turn up the three that we went ahead and started.
We're going to turn up Taming. We're going to turn up Lore, Animal Lore. We're going to turn up Herding. Why? Because that's the only three skills that we've started to learn. We'll cover the rest later. All right. But now, whenever you go in a dungeon or do whatever, you're not going to be like, oh, I accidentally spent mana. Now I'm learning up me uh, meditation by default. No, I didn't want to learn meditation. But now your skill points are going to that. And if you forget about that later down the line, your character's going to look like a fucking clown. Just saying. All right, agents, leave it alone. You're not ready for it. Filters, uh, this is where you can turn off specific uh, sounds in the game. If you don't like bard sounds and fuckers are playing instruments all the time. I hate bards. You hate bards? We all hate bards. Unclick it. Take that, Ego, if you're watching this video and you made it all the way here randomly. That's uh, weird if you made it this far. But, we, all, you know, we love bards. We just don't like the browns. Don't click it. All right. Um, hotkeys. This is where you uh, enable hotkeys to specific things. Like, if you want to go into items and you want to have, uh, I don't know, uh, use a bandage or you go into potions. You're like, I want to be able to uh, drink a heal potion. Like this. Like, I don't know. Number pad five. Why not? Set. Whenever I hit number pad five, boom. It'll be set. Um, to resume this tutorial on Leganus. Uh, let's see here. So we got hotkeys. We got macros. I don't use macros. Uh, I use scripts. And I got a lot of scripts. I got scripts for days. Why? It's really fun. I got a script to open a bag. I got a script to use a key. I got a script to find a vendor. That comes from a website. I have no fucking clue what it does. Don't even try. I have an auto ban script for when people run in my house. Came from something. I don't know. I got the Jace auto Dex script. I don't use it, but it's fun to play with sometimes. So we'll get used to it. We'll go over this in a later in a later video or later in this video. Friends, this is how you make them in a user interface. Uh, screenshots, advanced, and about. I don't know. All right, guys. I think that concludes the video to set up the interface and the creation of your character. We will go. Oh yeah, what's up, guys? <clears throat> this is the bonus round. We almost forgot. All right, chats. One of the big things that was added into the game uh, is uh, is chats. So, and I guess I'm looking at this. Almost forgot something else. So up here at the top bar, click on mini map or maps. Don't use mini map. It's bullshit. It's the old school thing, the one that you're used to. You double click it and it gets big. You know, maps, world map. This is an interactive map where you can come in, scroll in. You can scroll out. You see all over the world. I think you can click on and like do some like up. You can alt, hold down alt, move things around, find some stuff. It's really cool. You can click on go to location. I think it pegs it, puts a little thing on it. So, highly recommend the uh, world map. You can resize it as well. I'm going to play like a little ultra zoom like that. We'll just break you out of the way. So that's that. Uh, under Gumps, if you want your buff bar, that's where your buff bar will be, right here. We'll move that off to the side. Um, gumps, uh, think of Gump as like a little interface. Uh, aspects, uh, this is okay. We'll get into aspects later. Um, you can just click on the little pentagram right here above the head to go open that up. So, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, inventory, we've established journal is what we wanted to talk about. So journal, you click on journal. They have recently overhauled the journal system into the game. So you're used to seeing like blah, 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 blah. And then you see me say blah, blah, blah. Recently, if you click on little gear, um, you can now go to settings. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's been a while. Um, font. Is, is the default font that no one knows how to read. You can change this to, I don't know, something like Calibri. Hit save changes. And oh my god, look, I can read it now. Or like, uh, Calibri. And then we increase the font size. Then we hit save. You're like, oh my god, accessibility. I love it. Um, or you can do like Arial Black. And be like, okay, look. Uh, I forget, I think I added my own font. There's a way to do that. Uh, we may cover that in another video. Um, but you can up, oh, click that. Please select the, tick, the file name from the Windows system. So there you go. If you want to add your own font, hit the plus sign. 
and then hit OK. And I guess that's a file directory, and it'll add your font. So if you want to download a font from Google, uh, go to Google Fonts. Just Google Google Fonts. Um, it's a website. I forget what it is, and I'm not looking it up. All right, so black border, what does that do? Add text. All right, so border style, that's the default. So let's say we come over here, we do like Greek. So now we get to where this is becoming more of a chat window versus that old paper doll, right? Right. Uh, I am going to maybe do a light wood. Where's that at? We'll leave it at that. I know it's not the best. Bear with me. Um, if you want to make it see through, you could do that a little bit. Sure. Um, all right, but anyways, you get the gist. Now we've got something where the fonts are accessible, it's readable. Um, you now have tabs, chat, all, guilds, system messages, stuff like that. You can make new ones, I believe. Uh, right click, add a tab. Uh, you can right click on this, select filters. Uh, combat just has combat selected. Uh, they are still working on the uh... interesting. They are still working on the uh, the filtering to where like so, oh, there's a lot that happens still in regular. Um, so not everything is filtered, but this is just introduced like a month or so ago. But yeah, you can right click on this and be like, you know, go to filters and then you can click some stuff off. So they're working on it, but essentially this creates a chat window. Um, I, if I remember correctly, you can then, um, let's see here, hide messages in end game viewpoint. Go hit save. Uh, hit enter. So this will stop the text from coming over here. So no, you no longer see like system messages and stuff like that popping up. So that stops that spam. So if you want to kind of clean that up and make this more like a game uh, from this decade, you could do that. And then you get all these people. So that way it makes it a little bit easier. We'll just leave it right here. It's not much. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for, for y'all to be able to read and keep up with everything. My, my hope and dream for this is to one day just have a thing where I click on chat and I can just see people talking and I don't see all the overhead messages and shit like that. Um, right mouse over. Anyway, so I'll let y'all have at it um, and have fun. Let's see. Is there anything else? Anything else? Uh, uh, I think that's it. Peace. For the bonus content. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to be starting our character and getting ready for playstyle and setting up essentially Razor. Now, we're also going to be going and getting our character set up to be able to run the dungeon. So remember back when we went and turned all of our skills down, we're going to start turning our skills back up. So real quickly, um, I'm just going to be lazy about this. I don't want to do video editing. So over here on my main character, we're gonna click on skills. We can show you a skill profile real quick of what we're looking at doing. We're gonna be doing at the end game. This is what it'll look like at the end game. Uh, please do not worry about getting these to 120 in day one. You will not have the gold, or you may have the gold depending on how you do this. Uh, so we'll be getting all of these to 100. And then one of these will be, uh, yeah, all these, I'm sorry, all these will be to 100. And then as you unlock your 20 skill points through your skill orbs, and then you unlock the scrolls, you will lower these three to 80, and then buff all four of these to 20, because you'll get 700 total points to start. You'll unlock 20 additional points through skill orbs, so they're rare drops that you can buy. That'll bring one of these up to 120. The other three will increase to 120, through these going to 80. And you'll need skill scrolls for all of these to be able to move. With. You'll need 20 skill scrolls for all four of these in order to essentially allow you to go one point 
above 100 requires one scroll up to a maximum of 20. So you'll figure it out. I have faith. Anyways, so your template's going to be 120 veterinary. This will give you more pet damage and allow you to heal your pets. This is this is the ability to heal pets. There is this is the thing you have to have. You don't always have to go 120. I'm recommending it. Uh, animal taming 120. This is a must. Any tamer must 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 will have 120 animal taming. Do not be a hybrid bitch on this one. You will not be able to tame good pets. This will cripple your pet damage as well. Do 120 pet tam uh, pet taming. Yes, this will work with 100. Push it to 120 once you have the availability to do it. Uh, herding, 120. Uh, this increases pet damage um, and allows you to use focused aggression, <coughs> which will... Um, herding will increase your pet damage by passive, but focused aggression will increase your pet's damage by like an additional 30% on the target. Um, and then lower that target that you're focused aggression on. It'll lower its damage to your pets. Animal lore, uh, oh, it's one of the key mechanics to taming. Um, taming requires taming and lore in order to manage your pets. Animal lore also increases healing to your, I believe it increases healing and it increases your damage as well. Um, healing to pets, that is. So this is a direly needed skill. Taming and lore are the two critical things for doing Taming, herding is an offset skill, and veterinary, you technically don't have to have it, but you'd be ridiculous not to. All right, the other three are open for your play style, okay? Um, this is going to be the Dex Tamer build, so we're going to be talking through this. I highly, highly, highly recommend um, fencing, not mace fighting. I was working up mace fighting on the side, working up fencing. Tactics to 80 to allow you access to your codex and arms lore to 80 to allow you to disarm your targets. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, let me explain. Fencing, not me fighting, fencing, um, whenever you uh, essentially get a special or a critical strike, as I usually will refer to it as, if I ever do, um, <clears throat> essentially whenever you crit, uh, let's see, I did it. Whenever you crit, uh, you will essentially do extra damage, as you normally do when you crit. But with fencing, it will lower the target's defense, essentially lower increasing a uh, hit chance against them, which is very important because essentially what that just did was it'll increase the hit chance of your melee pets to then hit that target. Because obviously, a, hit, a miss is zero damage, right? So you want your pets to fucking be hitting. So fin that's where fencing is very important. Macing, it could be good because it lowers armor, but your pets don't have a 100% chance to hit targets. Therefore, fencing lowers the defense, increases the probability of them hitting, oh, dramatically increasing your damage. Um, <clears throat> arms lore, again, it will allow you to crit more. By It'll increase your crit technically by 8% at 80 and it will give you uh, the capability to disarm targets. When you disarm a target, your pets will do, I think it's like 25 or 30% extra damage. Look at the U, uh, the, uh, the Alliance Wiki. They'll do a shitload of damage to like to the targets during like a 10, 15 second window, and they'll that target will also do less damage to your pet, to just in general. Um, it's an amazing uh, ability to clear mob to mob. Uh, I think Disarm in general has a 20, 30 second, good god, um, uh, cooldowns, Disarm, has a 30 second cooldown on Disarm, however, whenever you proc your Disarm, if you miss your target, it will fail, um, and it will be a 15 second cooldown, um, you can do a system message, fail to disarm. We'll show you that if you're trying to track to that. And then disarm is a 30 second cooldown. You stri your strike disarms your target. There's your, there you go. There's your uh, cooldowns done. All right. You got this. If you didn't, go back and watch this whole thing over again. All right. Moving back over here. So, what we're going to want to do is we set our skills up and start to get ready for everything. So we're going to set our skills in 
let's see, animal taming, animal lore, arms lore, we're going to turn this one up, and then, hurting, hurting, hurting's up, and then we're going to do, uh, ah, fencing, we're going to turn fencing up. I know we have maces from where we're given maces since we went herding. Just ignore the maces. And then scroll all the way down. Uh, tactics. Turn tactics up. And turn veterinary up. All right. <coughs> now we got our skills out of the way. Let's talk about Razor. All right, so we need to get a couple of preliminary Razor commands established. If you don't know anything about Razor, just do what I do, all right? This one's gonna be a little bit tricky, so bear with me on this one. So let me do... Easy about this. All right, so it doesn't hurt to make a, a key, uh, like go into hotkeys and then do animal lore and bind animal lore uh, to a target. Uh, for me, I had uh, animal lore to alt Q. Uh, you can configure this all you want. This is going to be seldomly used. Um, what animal lore will do is it will lure animals. Oh. I know, right? I'm a smart ass. Uh, so let's find an animal real quick. If you don't know anything about taming, this is going to be a kind of a good thing to, uh, for you to learn. Uh, so it's a good way of looking at the, st the stats of an animal. There's a little raven. We'll go up, Alt-Q. And we can see here that we don't know the stats of this. But was it tamed? All right, okay, so apparently, ah, I'm so used to animal lore being at 120%, so. Yeah, up there we go, hey, we got it, there you go. So we've got 7% um, melee damage, 1% uh, bonus to wrestling, negative 3% to attack speed, some hit points and some armor, so now you can see what's going on here. All right, important to note, I'll go ahead and explain it now. Uh, hit points, Melee damage, wrestling, armor, and magic resist have a spectrum uh, from minus 10 to plus 10%. Obviously, you want stuff as close to 10%, so probably like 6% to 10% in the green, right? Plus 6 to plus 10%. I doubt you're going to get everything at plus 10%. Attack speed is minus the plus 5%, so minus 5 to plus 5. It doesn't go to 10. Um, so minus 4.3 is dog shit, <laughs> clearly. Um, I would say on average, uh, for grabbing initial pets and not looking for super, super high-end specs, if it's positive attack speed, that's great, and then I would probably look for wrestling above 8% always, because wrestling is gonna determine hit chance. You want high wrestling. You obviously want high damage, and then anything on the side on attack speed is great. I would not concern yourself with hit points, armor, or magic resist. Um, ideally, the closer they are to green, the better. I probably wouldn't want something with like negative 10, negative 10, negative 10, but just something to think about, all right? So that is arms lore. Um, this may be, I guess, now that I'm making this video, it's probably going to be a little bit of self-explanatory of Razor slash some spells. So bear with me. I'm kind of making this shit up as I go. Um, and you're just going to... We'll get what we'll, we'll, we get. All right. So next we need to create some... The basics, right? We need to be able to create uh, the control of our pets. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, 
Ah, okay, never mind. All my scripts are technically here. So I guess I'm not creating new scripts. No, this is just a profile. Uh, let's go ahead and resize this window a little bit. Uh, open this up. So what we're gonna look at is um, the all follow. I don't know why I have clear target cues for everything. I don't think you necessarily need it. I got paranoid one day when I was doing taming, like when I first started playing the game. It's not bothering me at all. So, but clear target cues. Is, I say that after about everything here. So just roll with the punches on this one. Um, so you've got a script for all follow. If you don't know how to create a script, um, obviously uh, you're in Razor, you're under scripts in the scripting tab right here. Click on the little new button. We're gonna type something. We're gonna call it the name of the script. Uh, I have it called all follow and then this will be a screen like this and you will type in verbatim this right here and then you will hit save yep and then you can say select a hotkey and then when you do this let's say I want to have all follow on the I don't know We'll go crazy and say it's a D. Why would I ever do that? I don't know. It's like I'm looking over at my other monitor going, what did I have it as? Because I don't want to fuck that up. All right. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to scripts. We're going to hit new. We're going to type it out. What do you want to call it? All guard me. All follow me tells your pets to stop what they're doing and follow you. It's a good way to essentially say, get the fuck back here and start following me, right? Disengage from whatever you're doing and start following me. It's how you control your pets. All guard me says, engage with the mobs that are trying to aggro and they're doing, and they're scanning or they're about to attack me. Aggro them. Guard me. So... If you're running past monsters, we'll show this in another video. If you're running past monsters with all follow and shit starts to hit you, say all guard me. If you don't plan on killing it, say all guard me. Half a second later, ish, all follow me, right? Let When you say all guard, they'll grab aggro. Then you just say all follow and bring them back. Now the mobs that were hitting you are now hitting them and you can keep on going. Um, it's not always the case, but it's really good when you're running past a whole lot of casters and you're just like, I don't need to take the chance or they're going to drop me. You run in there with all guard me on. They'll auto grab the aggro on the initial scan when the monsters start to initiate. And they go, oh, there's something near me. Let me scan. There's the thing. I'm going to attack the thing. I'm attacking the thing with the all guard on. Okay. Pop to all follow and the pets keep following you and you just run past all the mobs. That's how that works. So anyways, uh, all kill. Uh, tells you to attack a target. We're going to be using hurting, but this doesn't it, this doesn't hurt y'all for having us bound if you need to attack, and hurting's not doing the trick. Um, it, when you're low level, all kill will be your friend because hurt uh, hurting is not guaranteed. Um, so you'll want to kind of do this. Uh, patrol. Yeah. All stay tells your pets to stay where they're currently standing. Uh, there's a couple of uh, times where you'll this will be very nice to to bind. So I use all stay, all kill, all guard, and all follow. I re I don't use all kill that much, but I've have used it before in a pinch. All patrol, I I don't I don't use patrol. I think it's silly. Um, I have these bound to all kill for me. All kill is A. All guard is S. All follow is D. All stay is F. So A S D F right there on my keyboard. That little line. I think G is all patrol. To be honest with you. That little line right there is my pet commands. Um, <clears throat> now, moving on to the fun stuff. Let's see here. Bear with me because I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, I'm super lazy and... Uh, I'm super lazy and I have a thing that equips my weapon. This was part this was part of my script from my uh, backstabber build. If you've watched my backstabber build, you may remember this. It's uh, called weapon swap. Um, I it, bear with me. Uh, essentially, I have this right here run 
Um, I have it to where I will set a variable, add a target, click this, name it a variable, hit OK. Now you've got this, you die, you get a new mace, retar uh, click that, click retarget, click your new mace. Now that's been updated to the new target. See what we do here? So inside of scripts, we can say double click DFGDGDF, right? And when I do that, it'll do that. So if I really wanted to be silly about this, I would just say add this and we're gonna call it that. I'm just gonna remove that. So now when I run that script, it'll work. Oops. Um, so that don't concern yourself with this or this. This script right here is double click and then you don't have to call it my back stab web. Call it whatever you want if you want to. Essentially what this does is it's a button that will immediately equip my weapon. It's really good when you teleport into dungeons and you're like, I just need to equip my weapon. And you don't feel like looking in your inventory for your weapon. Hit that button, your weapon's in your hand. That easy. Um, there's also some good use cases with it for like, uh, if you're using two-handers especially and you don't have alchemy and you're doing a disarm, um, drink your potion and rearm. This right here is uh, some really good, like here's your offhand weapon, here's your main hand weapon. You can call it my main hand um, and you just shift between it. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. Watch my back step video. It's probably an hour, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, or 10. It's a four and a half hour video to be honest with you guys. I forget where it is, but it's probably early on. Um, so that's this one. Um, I know this is not a relevant script, so I'm sorry, I'll move along. Uh, this is focused aggression. So, don't worry about that line. All you need to do for focused aggression is say focused aggression. I have this bound to the number two. This I spam on every mob. I don't, I'm sorry, don't spam it. I use this ability when I'm targeting every monster. If I'm shifting from one target to another, I use focused aggression. This is how I tell my pets to attack. It's just this command right here. Say, uh... Um, single quote, bracket, focus aggression, close bracket, uh, close quote, hit save, bind it to like number one, two, whatever's your primary, right? Uh, your button next to this is your single, is your other button that you'll use is disarm. I know complicated script say disarm. So disarm will, uh, toggle disarm on. Uh, this is my number one ability. If focus aggression was number two, this is number one. We're going to get in how all this works later. But essentially, when you click this, your next uh, swing will attempt to disarm. When you click this, it'll turn off for your swings to stop uh, trying to disarm. It's like a toggle. You'll always try to disarm with it on. Click it again. You'll turn it off. It's really good for whenever you're watching your cooldown timers and you've either disarmed the monster and it's still not dead or you failed to disarm and in that 15 second window it's got like you know 10 percent life left it's about to die in like two seconds but within that two second window your disarm will wear off if you leave disarm on and the cooldown finishes and the mob's got three hit points left you will disarm it starting that 30 second cooldown window at 2% life, which is a fucking complete waste, right? So you can hit that button to turn it off, kill the monster, then turn it back on to move on to the next one. Just how the game works, I recently learned this all, uh, literally, uh, three days ago, on how disarm worked for the, t the attacking and the missing, stuff like that. Someone explained it to me. I was like, oh my god, it's genius. So I'm not going to act like I'm an expert at it. So, But anyways, good macro. Um... <clears throat> now, if I'm going to lose you here, I'm going to lose you here, but stay with me, guys. Stay. Hold. Attack closest target. If you made my uh, my script or whatever with the, the things, uh, the backstab weapons, this is essentially going to say, Is my weapon equipped in my hand? If not, put my fucking weapon in my hand. Um, this is, this was part of my backstab script. This was very important for when I was, uh, my potions would essentially equip my offhand and drink a potion. 
So this did a sanity check to make sure when I did my backstab, I didn't accidentally backstab with my one-hander weapon equipped. I would backstab with my two-handed weapon. That's that. However, it's not a stupid thing to put in here because this will make sure your, your, your weapon's equipped. Anyways, it's not that important for this one. Um, I say all guard me, which means my pets will be guarding me. It's not super important, but I'm, I'm lazy sometimes. Focused aggression will uh, will uh, clue in down here when you attack the target, but so just bear with me. You're gonna hotkey, target the closest friendly monster, and then this is where I essentially say, if the target's not within one tile of me, put a little thing above its head and say, it's out of range, which is okay, because you might tell your pets to, because what this will do is when you use this, it'll tell your pets to, to go. When you hit focused aggression, and then you do this right here, it essentially tells your pets to focus aggression the closest monster. And this is the trigger button that I sent it in. I'll show you the gameplay later. This will make fucking sense. This is how I do it. You were up to interpretation. You could technically say, make this say focused aggression, and then the whole entire thing will work on one button. The problem is if you fail focused aggression, you're completely fucked. Also, the problem is, is if you just want to hit this button and say, I'll guard me because maybe something's hitting you and you don't want your pets to uh, literally focus aggression one target and then focus aggression back because maybe two things came to attack you. You could just hit this button. It'll say, I'll guard me. You'll keep attacking your closest target and then they'll gather it and then you can literally say number two, focus aggression. And then if you want to put this on three, fuck it, you can. Three is whatever you're mousing over. Uh, or I'm sorry, whatever your closest monster is to you, like this raven right here, this raven right here, it's the closest. Whenever I hit that button, we'll auto will auto select that button with the focus direction. So if we got into it, and to show y'all, we did focus direction. We set the uh, sorry, uh, set hot key to two, and then we did uh, attack. Closest target. The, the script. Sorry, I usually do this in the script menu. We set that to three. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to set that to my back mouse button because that's what it is on the Guinness. And then let's say we. Uh, let's, let's get a monster. Hey, that's how you tame. Oh, look at that. Single click. Click tame. But behind tame to a key. I don't have it bound. You can just go into Animal Team and bind it. So let's get back. So focused aggression. It's going to... Ah! A hind is attacking you. That hind is the closest thing to me. Yeah, it was. It was. Now it is. So I hit two. We've got focused aggression queued. I could click them if I wanted to, but I'm lazy. So the, when I click my mouse... It didn't work. It didn't work. This fucking pissing me off. Hold on one second, guys. Rips, 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 rips. There it is. This is target. Ah. Ah. Set hotkey. Set. An idiot. Alright. Alright, we're gonna attack the hind. Now we're gonna attack the, the great heart. Two. Mouse. There we go. I failed focused aggression because uh, it would have said focused aggression, but now this thing is attacking that thing. It's not looking good. I'm going to immediately dive in. Huzzah! Have at thee. Oh, God. I've got one skill. I forgot. Ah! You want to be with me. You want to be with me. You want to be with me. I promise to take good care of you. It seems to accept you as your master. I'll follow me. Huzzah! All right. Uh, where are those all keys? All kill. A. All guard. S. Go kill that raven. Yes, we're tamers. We're on our way to riches. Walk up. Double click that corpse. There's nothing there. A run. Go. Huzzah! This is going to get better. It won't get better. Alright. We're on our way to being rich. Alright, so... 
<clears throat> In all honesty, I think you got the part, uh, the point. I wonder if there's horses around here. To be quite frank with you guys, I've never really ran around this area before. I kind of just go right into the dungeon. That would be nice if there was horses, because then you could tame a horse. There's all these people around here with horses. You'd think there'd be a horse. I guess not. That's Owen's house, by the way. It's an illusion of secretly mansion. All right, so we covered that. So like hit two, then hit that. See how it auto targeted that mob. I'm nowhere near it, and it's super nice. Um, that is the premise of how I play my character. I hit two, toggle focus direction. I hit uh, my mouse button or whatever you bind it to. Hit that. Pets are on it. I'm technically auto attacking it, so if I walk in. see me attacking it I'm missing it so you're not seeing any numbers go up because I have zero skill in macing but you get you get the premise I'll follow me because we're gonna be a dex tamer you want that to happen so you could literally be like all right here we go hit it all right we roll in we knock it out we're Gucci it looks exactly like that except on in-game dungeons and the mobs die just as fast um all right because that's why you're all here right you're trying to learn all right <clears throat> we got that. We got the target. We got the ban. Uh, we're not doing ban. Uh, oh! Oh, we... <laughs> we need to be able to heal our pets. All right, scripts. Bandage the tank. Bandage the tank. If you're not bandaging... So you don't stop doing your bandage and fuck up and start the timer all over again. I clear a system message every time. Uh, Hotkey, use bandage, no timer. If in system messages, that's too far away, too far, whatever. Um, I don't actually think that does anything, but whatever. Wait for target, target my pet tank. I have a the variable. Click that. Options. Add. Uh, click on your, tech, your paint tech. Yeah. Your pet tank. Uh, click that. I'm going to name, name it my pet tank. Hit OK. Boom. Huzzah. He's hurt. Come over here. We're going to hit uh, right scripts. Set the hotkey. We're going to set it to E because that's what I like it. Wait, not house fan. What is this nonsense? Uh, that's probably how I got messed up, guys. Um, pet tank. Set hotkey. E. Set. Yes. All right, come back over here, hit E. We're bandaging. Oh, we didn't turn on our bandage timers because we're idiots. And we try to heal. One. Uh, let's do bandage, bandage, bandage. Let's hit display counters, bandage timers, show bandage timers. Three, two, one. I healed him for one. We are a veterinary. All right. And you can see right here, we have now, in veterinary skills, increased by 0.9. It is now 1.8. Don't worry. We'll get this going. Um, <clears throat> so, we've got that working. We've turned our display timers on. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, pet tanks. Ah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to want to hear yourself. One of the good things about veterinary skill is veterinary skill, uh, you can look it up on the wiki, but the veterinary skill essentially will allow you to heal yourself, or uh, not to heal yourself, to heal other humans as a healing supplement. It's not as effective, but it's incredibly good at resurrecting players. You can resurrect players with uh, veterinary skills. 120 vet is like a 100% chance to res a player. Also, healing yourself is really good. Um, it pops off. So, what we need to do is we're gonna set a macro. Or, I'm sorry, set a script. Bandage, bandage self. This one's a little bit easier. Um, if not bandaging, bandage self end of. Essentially, it checks to make sure if you're, are you applying a bandaid? Are you applying a bandaid? 
If you are, it, the script will not run. You can hit it a million times. It will not run. Why is that important? Because if you've ever been panicking and you try to hit a Band-Aid over and over and over, like apply bandage, apply bandage, it will start a fresh bandage every time you hit it. This script will check. Are you bandaging yourself? Yes, I am bandaging myself. Cool. It's not going to run. So it allows you to flip out when a red or a monster is coming your way and you're inexperienced and you don't know to only start applying a bandage and don't touch it for 10 seconds. Because if you accidentally touch it with two seconds left, guess what? It'll cancel it, you won't heal in two seconds, and you're going to start all over from 10 seconds again. This saves your ass. All right. Put that on whatever you want. Uh, no, no, no. We're not going into cure potions. Um, uh, we covered disarm, we covered that. Uh, gate me, motherfucker. This is a really good script. Highly recommended. I got it from a website. Um, it's a Jace Owns script. It's called Quick Escape Through a Moon Gate by Jace Owns. Um, there should be a link in the description to our scripts. Check it out. Uh, if, we don't, if you don't already know... Ah, I was watching Asmongold. And Boo Whip. Shout out to Boo Whip. Um, let's see here. Uh, goes. I think it's called Outland Scripts. There we go. Uh, Outlands.uorazorscripts.com. And what was that script called? Uh, quick Escape. Let's search for Quick Escape. Boom. Uh, I don't know. Fine. Quick Escape Through the Moon Gate. Ultimate Quick Escape Through the Moon Gate. Um, creator Jason. Owens. You click on this. You do not read it. Why do you not read that? Because you don't care. If you knew how to do this, you wouldn't be here. You'll hit copy. You'll go into Razor. You'll hit new. You'll hit paste. You'll hit save. And then you'll hit bind. This button right here. When you walk up to a moon gate in a dungeon and you click the and you run this script, it will auto select the moon gate and teleport you out of the dungeon instantly. No fumbling around, trying to open, double-click the moon gate, open up the menu, clicking on the thing so you can teleport out. And then meanwhile, in that three and a half second, five second window, the red is laughing at you as they cast e-bolts on your ass to kill you. Ha-ha, sir. This will immediately pop you out. Um, there's some stuff that you need to run. Read this. Um, if name equals... Blah, then blah. I'm guessing you need to set this up, so read this, because I've already done that, all right? So that's to get out of dungeon, uh, danger. Oh, uh, let's see here. You're good, you're good, you're good. Good. You don't need a rope macro. I guess I can show you the rope macro. Uh... Rope. Telly rope. Uh, this is a script that I wrote. Um, essentially, it is a one script used for if you have majory, uh, it will auto, uh, cast majory. And if you then it'll allow you to do a rope. So essentially, it'll allow you to do the rope teleport double jump. Um, I built a majory check in here. So if you don't have majory, like we want on this character, it'll just rope. Very good script. I'll leave it up here. You can pause it too. One? All right, we're moving on. What's next? And... Ah. Veterinary. So obviously with anything, we need to be able to heal our pets. Um, veterinary supplies is a very effective way to healing your pets. We haven't talked about this. So in our inventory, right uh, when we created the, ca uh, the characters, we were given Two items. This giant fucking tampon pad of things that we'll call veterinary supplies. It has 600 of them. And these white ribbons of surrender that we will call bandages. So you have bandages, which will heal a single target. It's very effective for healing a single target. Or you have veterinary supplies, which will heal all of your pets within a two tile range. And you. Hmm. An effective bandage that will heal one target and one target only at only one time, or something that will heal 
all of your pets and you. I wonder what you're going to end up using a lot of the time. Uh, I usually take about 100 veterinary supplies into a dungeon uh, with me and about 80 um, bandages. That's usually my template loadout. Right? Green flickering? That must be a monitor. Let's see here. I think that's it on the macros. Oops, sorry. I think that's it on the macros. I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. So... That will be this video. Um, so a light introduction on the macros, the skills, and getting it all set up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kick it over to probably a second video that will then show you how to get taming leveling. And we're going to make our way into the dungeon. All right. And if you haven't figured out where we are by now, because I've got all this crap all over the place. We'll move this back over here. We started out right down this road. Very, very close. Right here. And now we're going to be... Not necessarily heading to the dungeon quite quite yet. We're gonna go do a little training. Uh but that'll be in the next video. So we're gonna train and in the next video we'll take we'll train up our initial skills to make sure that we can heal ourselves and heal our pets. And then we're gonna head into the dungeon. Get you done. If you like the video, please give it a like. Please give it a subscribe. If you didn't like the video, please give it a like anyways. Alright guys, you all have a great one. Peace. All right, guys, welcome back to another video of Leginus's Guide to the Ultimate Tamer. All right, so opening up, we've already covered creating the character. We've already covered uh, establishing our user interface. We covered getting all of our scripts stood up, getting our skills ready. For a skill recap, in case you don't care about all the script commands and everything, really, really quickly, we are going to recap what we just did. So close, close, close. All right, for the skills... We're going to be doing 120 vet, 120 taming, 120 herding, 120 animal lore. These are our core pet skills right here. Um, if you're not an established player, you will only bring these to 100. And then 120 as you acquire skill scrolls and as you acquire the uh, skill mastery orbs to unlock the, uh, the 720 points from the cap. Um, you, you will have a cap of 700 points and then you'll move it into 720. Um, you will not be able to move the uh, pat from 100 to 101 and onward without skill scrolls. So these will require 20 skill scrolls and the other points to increase uh, one of these as well to uh, 120. So these will start off as 100 and that's fine. These, because you'll have the points, will also go up to 100, but they will then lower back down later in the game. You'll want to bring them up to 100 because you'll need them for later uh, for, for you will just want the extra hit and the extra crit to help counterbalance the fact that you don't have this trust me it's not going to make, make up for it but the increased accuracy to your swing speed to your uh, chance to hit with your weapon will be kind of nice so all 100 right here oh uh, sorry mace fighting will be fencing um, I just happen to be working at mace fighting on my main character right now and leveling up one of the end game systems called the codex you will be doing fencing. Preferably fencing, you don't have to. Um, fencing will lower the target's uh, uh, defense when you crit. Um, and essentially when the defense is lower, you have an increased chance to hit. Not just you, your monsters, your pets will have an increased chance to hit, which is huge because if your pets are hitting for 250 damage each, so you got five of them, and then two of them miss, guess what you just did? You fucked up because you didn't go fencing. Um, tactics for tactics, arms lore for arms lore. Arms lore will help you uh, do a disarm, disarm, uh, 30 second cooldown when you hit, 15 if you fucking miss. It sucks. When when you do disarm your target successfully, it will increase all of your damage, including your pets, by 30% to that target, and it will lower them. It's like a it's like a temporary discordance if you're familiar with that ability. It's fucking amazing. Um, veterinary will allow you to heal your pets and yourself. Direly needed. It also increases your pet damage. Animal taming. Huh, Self-explanatory. You want to be able to tame monsters. 120 increases that, so you get the most damage out of this. Plus, it gives you the 120 is needed for the top end to your pets in the game. You don't always use 120 needed pets, but I highly recommend you do 120. Hurting it allows it increases pet damage, and then allows you to do focused aggression, which essentially tells your mobs to go and attack that target. It'll do extra damage to them, and they'll take less damage from that target that you happen to be focused aggressed. Animal lore is a one uh, is an ability like taming, 
lore is also required as a skill check in order to tame and to use mo and to use specific monsters. It also increases damage and it increases your he healing through vet. Um, highly recommend reading the wiki wikis over these because they're very, very beneficial. All right, moving over. We are back on our character. We are day one. We are two hours into what, listening to Leganus ramble, and we haven't done a single fucking thing. So let's figure ourselves out, shall we? Uh, if you watched my macro video, which I highly recommend, links should be in the descriptions and all that fun stuff. Um, highly recommend that if you don't know what the macros are going to be. Uh, I'm going to shift uh, this character from this YouTube one to Legs Malay Tamer. Yes, load this. Cool. Now, all these things should be working just like my main account, and we should be good to go. Minimize this. Minimize this. this. Alright. Now, before we go into the dungeon, one more skills. Alright. We've got a couple of uh, skills. We got vet, we got uh, lore, we got um, tactics. We've probably got, uh, we don't have mace fighting, right? We don't want mace fighting. Uh, we will need a little bit of gold because of the options that we chose. Uh, I would rather y'all have the staff when you create your character. I'd rather you have the staff from Herding than the the, sh or the Shepherd's Crook than the, the Chris. Uh, we'll go buy a Chris here in a little bit. Don't worry, guys. Um, if you really want your Chris and you really want your Shepherd's Crook before you go in there, just walk around and ask for gold. All right, so real quick, we're going to go into a uh, train um, animal lore. Uh, price is six gold. Use our little thing. We're gonna pay that out. Then we're gonna go right here. We're gonna do uh, veterinary, 482 gold. Go ahead and click here. Use that. Uh, this is a skill thing. It gives you a thousand gold worth of training credits. Uh, and then we're going to learn uh, herding. Do that. Mount uh, veterinary. I gotta teach the. All right, so 50, 50, 50, 50. How much do we have left? We have 67 credits. That's not a lot. It is what it is. <clears throat> we are going to learn. We're gonna walk over here. Walk to this weaponsmith right here. We're gonna learn uh, fencing. Fencing. Use a six seven. Now we have a fencing up here. It's not a lot, I know, but they got rid of the thing in our backpack. All right. Uh, can you work up fencing with a dagger equipped? I don't think so, but we're about to find out. Have at thee! Oh, you totally can. Perfect! We made the right decision. We have a dagger equip and we can work up fencing. Alright. This is what we're going to do. We're going to walk to the new player dungeon. So while you're in Sanctuary, if you're new, let me explain some of this. While you're in Sanctuary, this is a new player dungeon. In the new player dungeon, not on the island of Sanctuary, but only in the new player dungeon, you will have an incredibly high rate of skill gain until you hit 80 skill. In Sanctuary, you will not be able to level any skill past 80. The game will not pre will prevent you. It will give you a 0% chance on any skill past uh, from 80 and onward. All right? So what you're going to want to do is come in here, and now you will be able to power level yourself. We're going to see how this works, but my recommendation right now is to take a little hind or, or some pet that you formed. I'm going to take the hind since I was outside and I grabbed him. I'm going to bust out my dagger and I'm going to have at thee. And then I'm going to tell him to stop. We're going to bring my thing up. We're going to bring their thing up. So if you see, we are gaining our fencing. And, and, and honestly, this is this right here. If you made a script to auto bandage your pet every, I would say, 5,100 uh, 
5,100 milliseconds, and you just kept reapplying. And literally, if I wanted to come in here and macro, veterinary and macro, all my malaise abilities right here, what I would do is come right here. I would go into script, uh, new, uh, macro, uh, vet. I would do, um, actually, level vet. I think I did it the other day. Hotkey, use bandage, wait for target. Target, uh, you'll want to set the ID. So if you'd want to, you can do like, what is it? Uh, what is it? Damn it. There we go. It's a greater than sign. So it's the sign that looks that way. <laughs> Sorry, my, my camera's reflected. Yeah, yeah, it goes that way, facing that direction so weird because it's technically going the other way for me anyways uh it's the greater than sign info we'll give you this click that um click this little number right here this will give you the id all right what's hitting me ah my pet's hitting me it finally figured it out turn it on i'll follow me i'll stay now i should just take it Anyways, uh, if we die, we die. All right, so take this, paste. Now we've got the new ID, and then we're gonna hit save. We're gonna hit play, and now my character will loop and auto heal that. However, this deer just don't wanna, it just, just wants to keep attacking me. We'll just say all stop. Is all stop also make you stop? When did that happen? Whatever. So we're working up fencing. Fencing's almost at 50. So, I mean, that saved us, what, 500 gold, 500 gold, and 500 gold by just punching this. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna start working up our bandaging right here on ourselves. I don't know if we actually get veterinary skills for this. This will be interesting. Uh, we don't have dexterity yet, so uh, this is going to be a minute. And... Oh, we don't get skill for healing ourselves. That's pretty cool. Uh, but look at that, dude. It healed the shit out of us. Uh, equally, let's go ahead. We'll double-click our, th our thing. Uh, we want strength to go up. We want dexterity to go up, right? We do not want intellect to go up, right? So we'll leave intellect down. We'll leave the other two facing up. Yeah, we'll get back to punching this. And honestly, I would just do something like this. If it's not killing the de the deer, uh, I would come over here. I would hit play on the script. Now, uh, every time I poke it, it'll attempt to heal it, and we'll start working up veterinary skill. Literally, you are now working up uh, all your melee to 80 and your vet to 80, and you haven't even really started to working up taming yet. You went out, you tamed one little deer. You see where we're going with this. Right. <clears throat> I would love to leave this recording and then just like do a time lapse and then come back and it's done. Um, this will probably take 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to do this. Uh, the veterinary skill won't be effective until uh, with the dagger in our hand. What I would recommend is I think for like 25, maybe 40 gold. Go back to that weapon vendor or that vendor that we were at where we trained our fencing earlier. Buy a training Chris from them for like 40 gold. The training Chris will, uh, will, will essentially always do one damage. 
where we don't seem to be doing one damage all the time. Or we are, but we're not doing it fast enough. Maybe it's just one of those things we just need to get a little bit higher in tactics and everything, and then this will start kicking in. But, ah, no, it's working now. We're starting to see consistent one damages. Perfect, never mind. Don't worry about that. Use the dagger. Save your money. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I know that guy's kind of in our way. So our script's running. We've now got 50 in all seven of our core skills. One, two, three, four, seven. Yep, we can count. Uh, veterinary will level to 80. Arms lore will level to 80. Fencing will level to 80. And tactics will level to 80. All, all with just doing this. Animal lore... Uh, animal taming and herding will be the only things that you'll have to level up. Herding is super easy to macro. I'll show you how to do it. Super, super easy. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of a way, an interesting way to do herding in the dungeon. Hmm. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, so let's just act like this is all sunshine and rainbows and we fast forwarded. I think we can play imaginary land, right? I don't think I'm going to actually level this character up. I'm just showing you this from this perspective. Uh, the other stuff, I'll jump on the test server and I'll show you all how to do some of the other things as we go through leveling. So we can just kind of time lapse a lot of this. All right. Now. I'll guard me. Follow. I'll guard. All right. So now we've got our pet. He's our trusty pet. Oh, before we go into the dungeon. And y'all go, oh no, my pet died. Or something like that. All right. If you click on this pet, you see right here, it says a great heart and all this fun stuff. All right, we're going to animal lure him. Either a single click and do lure or you're cool enough and you bound it, right? All right, so we've got animal lore. If you notice, level zero. If you've played UO before, there's a thing called bonding. And when you bond your pet... Um, with you, then that pet will, when it dies, it will just kind of become like a ghost and follow you around and you can resurrect your pet again. To do that in Outlands, it's different than the other game and different than traditional uh, UO. In Outlands, all you have to do is fight with your pet and gain 100 experience and it goes really quickly. Gain 100 experience and then your pet will be bonded and it will be forever yours. If it dies before it hits level one with that 100 experience, it will permanently be dead. Permanently. If you get a really fucking good pet, and then some dick walks up and kills it, or you forget to turn off aggro, and it dies, it's fucking gone. GG. Go go, go do it again. Um, to turn off aggro, I know I just mentioned that while looking at animal lore. Click on abilities. Uh, aggro. Red light on, gray light off. You can also do things like prefer melee, prefer magic, prefer melee, prefer magic, AOE. AOE to the butt, AOE to the puss. I don't know what the fuck that part means. Whatever. Uh, I mean, it does look like like I'm AOE, like I'm going to piss on you. AOE, I'll put in your ass. I don't know. I saw the finger in it, and I immediately went finger in the bum in my head, and I just rolled with it. Anyways, jokes aside. All right, so we go back to stats. All right, we got this window. If you want details, there's it's an attack class, zoology. You can click this. This is your zoology menu. We're going to tackle this later. Um, but essentially, there's a lot of in-game systems. You can level all the pets in the game. Um, you have progress. You fight with them. You work up the experience bar. You gain a pet slot for every one of these pets. It's fun stuff. All right. Now, if you've been paying attention to this menu and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm used to this game, but I don't know what this passive taming skill thing is. Let's talk about taming. Now we got a level of taming, right? Perfect segue. In this game, and I may not explain this perfectly for min-maxers, but you're not here for min-maxing. You're here because you have no clue what you're doing or else you wouldn't have been listening to me talk this long. In this game, you can work up taming by two methods. And from a min-max... I don't know how to min-max this dungeon. Everything else I know how to min-max. When you level, you level based off of when you attempt to tame the creature. And when you successfully tame a creature, you will then get what's called a, ta a passive taming skill gain. 
up to five points. Uh, taming the creatures aside, what this passive does is as you tame and you get points and when you get your five points, you can then run around with pets like this right here. Huzzah! Have at thee. Focused aggression. Get them. Maybe... Oh my god, are we actually going to kill this? Get fucking wrecked, Mon um, Bat. So, as we do things like this, we play tamers, right? This is literally how the, the class plays. As we play a tamer, and we kill this, and we get experience for this, we have a chance to turn a passive taming point into a permanent taming point. So think of it like this. I'm going to go off, and I'm going to tame monsters... I'm going to tame and release, tame and release, tame and release, tame and release, fail, 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 tame, tame, tame. Boom. I look over. My passes are up to five. I'm going to take my pets. I'm going to run into a dungeon, and I'm going to go and play my fucking character finally. I will play my character, and I will burn through those five points. I will have now five additional points in training. Please keep in mind, when you're doing the tame and release and all that, you will have a chance to gain points as well. It'll just be fairly low. So... From a min-maxing perspective, outside of this dungeon, because this dungeon has ex accelerated rates and it's 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 different. How taming works is you will tame monsters and kill them when you successfully tame them. We'll get into it. There's a script for that. You will tame them. You will kill them because you don't want the released pet to stick around. Tame, kill it. You will wait for it to respawn and tame it again. And you can AFK that. And after an allotted amount of time, which I don't exactly know right now because, to be quite frank with you, they just raised the, the rates. They made it a lot faster. So let's say an hour or so, maybe even lap that, you'll look back and you may have gotten point two skill in your passives, maybe two, one, two points in, pa in, 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 not in passives, I'm sorry, in animal taming. So you've gone from 75 to 77. However, you now have plus five passives. So you run into the dungeon, right? You run into the dungeon. You spend your five points. You play the game. You kill some monsters. Oh, no, our hind! Ah! Our forever pet is dead. Um, and as you're killing monsters with your pets, then you'll turn these passives into permanent points. So it's like you tame monsters, you fill up the battery, you go into the dungeons, and then you kill them with your, your monsters. The passives burn fairly fast so, when, so what the strategy is is every I believe it's every five levels you will move to another tier of pets there's a website for this it is if you want to stop listening to me talk this is a perfect opportunity to when you go to this website tameoutlands.com TameOutlands.com. There's actual an, uh, an SOP, a standard operational procedure, right here on how to do all this. You can stop watching my videos right now. Haha. -ha. Um, fuck. There actually is a guide right here, literally. See. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through it if you don't want to read any of this, because I went through this and I had to read it and I put my head against the wall and I said this doesn't explain everything. Maybe it did, but I don't want to read it because I'm impulsive, ADD. That's why you're here. You like YouTube. All right. So it will tell you every. We'll get to 80 from here. Don't worry about that. So every five levels, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, 90 to 95, 95 to 100, 100 to 105, 105 to 110, 110 to 115, and 115 to 120, right? It's all laid out where you go, what you tame, what you do. So if what you do right here is from 80 to 85, right? You only need to get the five passes worked up. So most likely... You will go and win 4.1 passive gains are accumulated. So at 80, you, you'll come here at 80. So at 80.9, when you have exactly 4.1 gains, you will stop taming. And you'll fuck off. Right? At 85.9, and you have 4.1 gains... Then you'll go into a dungeon, and then you'll do that. This right here, this getting the .9 or whatever, it will not take long. However, with the gains, it, it, to be quite frank, I, I know it just changed. You will prop just put it this way, you need to fucking between the passives that you get, or the, the main things you get from taming, and the total points, all you want is to hit 90 
In this bracket, you want to you'll start at 85 and you want to hit exactly at 90. I'll explain it to you. You do not want to go to 91. You don't want to go to 92. If you get if you AFK for a little bit and you're at 87.5 and you uh, because you went and you let it run for a while, your character died but it ran for 5 hours, right? Come back. It's the morning. You're at 87, maybe 88 points of taming. You started at 85, and you've got five passes to spend. So let's say you're at 83. I'm sorry, you're at 88. You got five points to spend. What do you do? You go to a dungeon and spend all five points in the dungeon, and then you come back at 92, right? 88 plus five. Keep up, guys. 88 plus five. 93. So, <laughs> so you're at 80, 93 points. No, you do not go here at 93 points. You go here at 90. Bend only the two points of your passive and come here. Why? Big brain. When you're at 90, you have the lowest chance to succeed against this mob. You never want to successfully tame the creature when you're doing when you're in the this tier not in this dungeon this dungeon is different you do not want to successfully tame it you want your tames to fail so the higher taming you have the higher success rate you have to to be successful you want as low why because when you successfully tame the creature then you have to kill it and wait for it to respawn you don't want to be successful. You want to fail as often as you can. Anyways, that that is that is Ligonus's philosophy. So you come here at the earliest you can. You do it. I will at least admit, every time I've done taming, I've just fucking sandblasted all five points, said fuck it, and went back and did it again. I'm an idiot. But, I mean, it's whatever y'all want to do, right? It's your character. All right. You listen to me ramble long enough. Let's actually go in here and do some stuff. All right, so we got a little bit of skill. We have a dagger. We are deadly. All right, let's move this out of the way for right now. Let's, uh, let's bring that down here. Actually, we're going to bring chat down here because what do y'all care? It's not like you're communicating. We'll just move this right here. All right. <clears throat> here we go. Here's the secret. You're in the dungeon. We'll refer to the website. Animal taming, 50 to 60. What do you want to do? Colossal frogs. Where are we going to go? We're going to walk in. We go straight, ignore these wings, do not go down there. That's death row. We're gonna come in here. If there's mobs in here, we're gonna run right past them. We're gonna run in here. Close close the door. Close. Close. Because if the door is closed, the mobs won't come. In this room, this is a safe room. In the other rooms, walking death. When when people are over here thinking they're cute because they're tamers and they're fighting with their colossal frogs and there's headless right here. What are they doing? They're being an idiot. They went in the death room. That guy's in the death room. Watch out. All right. There are frogs that spawn in here and in that room right there. What we need to do is go tame frogs. Frogs do not attack you. All this stuff out here attacks you. So you'll walk past those. Walk, walk, walk. Hide, hide, hide. Duck, duck, duck. Close this. Come over here. We need that Colossal's Frog, but that guy is punching it. So that you can't tame that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little pretty frog. Click on him. We're going to tame. Boom. Start taming this creature. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. You fell to tame. Perfect. We're going to uh, an animal lure it. Sorry. Uh, don't want to tame it. <clears throat> Fail to tame. That's fine. Tame. Uh, one thing to note. Uh, system and oh uh, sorry it ah we got it huzzah all right we'll turn um 
my name back on. If you single click on your character, you can go to show skill gain chances. And whenever you fail or succeed, it'll look at add an extra thing in the system menu right here. Uh, so what it wasn't showing is at this level, we have a 100% chance to get a skill gain. So I personally recommend tame, tame often around here. Because at 100%, you might as well just keep taming. So with this already, I've already got 1.5 points in, 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 the, in my passive. Now, I was just doing this the other day with my friend. I'm a little weird. I don't know if... I, I don't know if the passives really burn that fast in this dungeon. Because there's not a lot of experience to be gained in this dungeon. So, you may just end up doing tame releasing. A lot, a lot of taming and releasing. Um, Here we go. We got... Tame. We're gonna keep going. You know you love me. Kill the tame. Tame. And then you just keep at it. I know this isn't a uh, this isn't a very compelling video, but I want to see. I want to show y'all doing this. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna get a couple of frogs real quick. Cool. Our entourage continues. We're get, we'll get three frogs. And then because this guy's killing the fro colossal frog with the name of ha Hang All Tamers, uh, we're going to go and kill that colossal frog and mess up his little script. Come on, frog. You know you want to do this. Come on. Let's get after it, bro. Aggression, boom, we're on it. We're on it. So now we're doing focus aggression. We got skills. Uh, right here, you'll see that uh, hurting is going up. We want to focus aggression to level up hurting. You need to focus aggression every two seconds. So just hold down the two button. Click. Click. You get the point, just hold it down, wait for it to pop up, and then click your uh, thing again. Oh, that corpse just hitting me. Ha ha. Let's see here. Well, now we're at 3.5 passive gain for doing all that. <clears throat> Start banning ourselves. We'll keep poking this thing. We're working all of our skills up now. We're an elite taming machine. The Corpser right here is a really good thing to work up archery on. Um, if you do want to be working up archery and you didn't want to do uh, like a melee skill like I'm doing, archery works. I'm not knocking it. Um, you'll just have to take care of arrows and stuff like that. I, I, do I recommend it? Sure, whatever. But um, Corpsers, you can sit there and fire your arrows at the mobs and you're perfectly fine. Equally, same thing. You could buy a training bow and use the training bow to essentially attack uh, your own pets if you want to and tell your pets to stay. All right, so now that we've killed all this, where are we at? We're at 52 animal taming, so we've gotten 2.8 taming already. Um, it's gonna take a few hours for me to play this out to 80. So I'm gonna walk through this dungeon and hopefully not die. It would be kind of funny if I did. So essentially, tame, um, ah, here we go. Oh, that's already released shit. Uh, is that released? No, it's not. We'll tame the colossal frogs. Uh, at 50-50, at you tame colossal frogs, but you can tame the small little frogs as well. 
If you want to run around and kill stuff, you can. I feel like it's faster just to spam taming on the Colossal Frogs. Uh, because the Colossal Frogs have a little bit harder chance to gain skill. See, we're already up to uh, point five, uh, point, uh, 4.0 passives. The Headless is attacking me. We have to duck. Oh, God. Oh, God. Be like I told you, dude. Walking death. You don't want to go over there. Oh. I forgot when you create your character. Um, this is a good thing to put in this video. Five videos later. Uh, oh, intelligence is locked. You throw these on the ground. I forgot these were intelligence. We're not going to level up intelligence. But these little red ones, you can click. It'll increase your strength by uh, 10 permanently. So, it's not the end of the world if you forget to do it. All this crap, all your strength and dex will level by themselves. So, that's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, I will say what we can do is we can pick some of these up. Pick up two of them. We're going to do a lot. Uh, we will turn up intelligence. We will click on both of them. We'll have now 32 intelligence. There is a max, I believe, of 20 or 25 that you can have. Like 220 skills, 225 skills, something like that. Uh, we turn it back down. So as these level up, it'll start burning out of that. And that'll just work itself out. Now we're at max intelligence. All right. Let's see how this room is looking. Dude, this fucking dick. I, we were literally trying to tame that thing, and he opened this stuff and brought all the mobs. All right, so, all right, I'm just going to run in the dungeon. So you'll do... From 50 to 60, you will do the frogs. And then from 60 to 80, you can do cave bears. I have run around this dungeon a few times, and I get kind of bored doing just the frogs. Uh, over here, if you want to get a little bit more action, right around here, there are, oh, fuck it. there are these hatchlings right here, uh, that little alligator hatchlings. Anyways, the alligator hatchlings, uh, you can tame as well. Uh, those are fun to play with. They're aggressive, so while you're trying to tame it, it'll get you used to needing, like, a frog or another pet to hold your aggro. And essentially, you walk up with, uh, hit all guard for a second. Uh, it'll guard, it'll peel the aggro off. Then you hit all follow, so your pets stop attacking. But the monster is still attacking your pet, which is perfect, because you don't want to take the hit. You want your pets to take the hit, and then you will simply tame the monster while it is attacking your pets and not you. If you need to, you can use veterinary skill and heal your up. I will cover this outside of here. You may learn some of those things, but for the for all intents and purposes, tame the colossal frogs, and you'll come over here. Be aware in this room, unlike the frog room, shit can start killing you. You would like ideally, um, you'll use your frogs, you'll farm some gold. Like those things, these larvas are a real big pain in the ass. Uh buy a Chris. As soon as you can, just go buy a Chris. This dagger sucks ass. If I had a Chris right now, the Chris would do like decent damage. And with some frogs in this Chris, we could we could just mow through mobs. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to go through the hassle of buying a Chris, uh, uh, you could would need to buy a Shepherd's Crook, and you could buy one of those two. But anyways, uh, there is a bear that spawns right here where I'm standing. There's a bear that spawns right over here, like right here-ish, and there's a bear that spawns right here. You see the dead bears? There's a bear that spawns right here, and then there is a bear that spawns right here. So, those are the three bears. You'll have to uh, get to where you can kill these monsters. If you want to be able to do that, uh, with the with the focused aggression that I showed you, you will dominate in the uh, killing one monster area. 
uh, pay attention to your pet's lives. When you have multiple pets like this guy does, what I usually do is let's do this right here. Click and drag. We've got our pets, right? We set this up. I will leave my pets right here. <clears throat> and I will heal my pets. I, uh, if, I would probably just keep like three of the bears and then kill the other bears off. I probably would personally wouldn't rename one pet to like the tank, sir tank, sir tanky tank, bear tank, berry tank, hairy tank. I don't know, whatever. Rename it something. And then don't forget on the add-on that we stood up. Got our options. Uh, we've got, yeah, sorry, this is all my shit. This is my main account. Uh, oh, no, it's not. Uh, you will go to my pet tank, retarget it, select whichever one you renamed, click that. Now it's retargeted. So with that, uh, out of the way, then when you hit that macro to heal your pet, um, it'll always heal that specific one. And then what you can do is go in and animal lore, right? Animal lore all your other pets. And then click on uh, abilities. And then this is their his pets. So up here you would see the aggro. Turn the aggro for your non-tank pets off. So they don't pull aggro. And your tank pet is guaranteed to pull the aggro. And the one that you just designated as the tank. Doesn't have to be an official tank type of pet. Um, and that way, the thing that you've told your script, when I click this button, I'll heal, heal that specific pet. You know that pet will always be the one having the aggro. So, little things to work around. We've got our bear. Aim. We have no chance of taming this because I don't have the skill. Anyways, you get the point. Yeah, I'll get the point. Alright, let's uh, run through here. Anyways, you would just do that. Uh, don't forget, burn your passives in the dungeon and do that loop until 80, right? Oh, uh, motherfucker. Oh, perfect. We got That's We're going to go over here. We're going to tame. Fucking shit, dude. Come on. Did he just hide? He hid. You wanna play that game? I'll play that game. It's my pet now. Just every time I hit it with uh with my dagger, it interrupts his uh, taming, and then we just reset it. Running, run, run, run. He's gonna run there, and it should aggro him. And now we're taming the creature. Hey. Got to learn to troll the troll. All right. We'll give this a couple tries. If we get it, we get it. We don't, we don't. Felt the same. What is the taming chance? 16% chance to tame the colossal frog. Tame, tame, tame.
Oh my god, is this thing fucking hitting me? It is. Don't you die. Don't you die. Oh. Okay, that's too far away. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. All right. <clears throat> y'all get the points. Or y'all get the point. Don't fucking attack the frog, and you'll be okay. Hopefully there won't be some guy who's, like, randomly trolling you with Headless. So that that way you can just, uh, play the game. But if there is, you know, you gotta take care of business. We don't have any armor, so I can just run back in there. That thing's, uh... Is he just leaving to release frogs? He is not. Okay. So, now that we died, it's all good. We're back to Tammy. And here he comes with that entire entourage. We're going to dip over here. Tell the tame. You don't have to be up on it, tame. You can be a, a distance away. Thinking, that corpse is not attacking me. Great. Perfect. We got a fossil frog. Alright, all follow me. That's released. I'll guard me. Kill that. Kill you. Read on that. Got it. My experience. Focus depression. Keep the heal on the frog. Zoom in a little bit. Boom. That's how you get it done. That's how you get it done. Now we got 50 gold. You know what we can do now? We got 50 gold. Let's just go do it. I know y'all are watching me. You're like, oh my god, this is entertaining as shit. It's like watching a stream. Alright, so... I might just honestly, I'm just gonna record me doing this. I'm not gonna do a whole thing. But I know you're gonna want to see like some of the trials and heartaches that you're gonna have to figure out. So now that we just killed random two mobs, again, you should be able to walk directly into this dungeon after you set up your character if you're not goofing off like I am and trying to explain everything. Grab the Colossal Frog, kill, hopefully it's under 50 gold, and then go buy your Chris. I want to say it was 40 gold for a Chris. Bye. Boom. 40 gold. We've got us a Chris. Equip the Chris. Take off your clothes. Run around topless. Let's go. Now we are a Dex Tamer. We have figured it out. We have conquered everything. We have used our dagger to work up our skills. We are sitting at a nice 55 fencing without having to spend 2,000 gold on this. We have not had to spend a, any gold on this entire character except for the 40 gold that we just spent. Um, We're going to run back. All of our items are blessed. Our bandages are blessed. They don't normally blessed, so we don't have to worry about dying right now. We're going to attack that headless. We're going to go for it. Ah, oh, look at that. 18 damage. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah, oh, baby. Uh, all guard. Kill that. Tame that. We can tame, and we can kill at the same time. You see what we're doing? Multitasking. We're going to heal our pet. We're going to 
attack that. We're going to all guard, but we're going to attack that. Now we're going to focus aggression. We're going to open the door, and we're going to start taming. Tame it again. I'm going to move this out of the way because it's starting to upset me. I'm just going to go ahead and this right here. We're going to grab our gold. They're burning passives and working passives at the same time. Tame. Oh, dude, do you think you're fucking taming this? You think you're fucking taming this? Give me my fucking... Get out of here. Get fucking out of here. Get wrecked, kid. You don't even have a fucking pet. Look. I'll follow me. I'll guard. Boom. Well, this is my team. Alright. Uh, we're gonna t So, as I told you, we're going to close out the menu. We're going to reopen it because it's kind of weird like that. Um, we're going to name him Froggy Tank. Frog Tank. Boom. Alright, Frog Tank, we don't want you to die. We're going to come over to Taming. We're going to do re uh, on uh, my Tank Pet. We're going to retarget. We're going to click the thing. Do the thing. Now I hit E. Auto starts managing. I don't have to select that tank anymore. All right, so we wanna uh, wanna maximize stuff. Let's attack this frog. We'll do focused aggression. We'll all, all kill. Focused aggression. Focused aggression. Boom! We killed it. Follow me. Name. Heal. Uh, if we go to our script, level taming. This is the taming script that you'll be downloading off that website that I told you about. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious, but it'll work. It uh. Play. We're gonna target a tank pet, and then we'll auto. So it'll now auto tame and heal for us. It's on the website. <clears throat> if not, I'll have a link in the description below. So essentially, when you start it, it says, "Hey, can you define? Uh, please select your pet," and it will auto heal your pet for you and auto tame the creature, and it is lined. It, that this macro will work from levels uh, 50 all the way to level 120 and it'll go to the website. This is a macro from this website and it will auto essentially tame. When you successfully tame the creature, it will release the creature and it will kill the creature that you've released. So now I don't have to pay attention anymore. I have a tank pet. I have band-aids, I have a script, and I have y'all. Anyways, just keep doing this. We'll look at our skills again. Our skills are going up. Animal taming is 55.5. We've gained 5.5 skills already. We're going to wait till this tames, and then I'm going to stop running the script. I'm actually kind of curious on how this is going to play. Uh, we have 255 bandages, so it's all good. Once I successfully tame this... Um, we. I'm going to run around the dungeon. I'm going to show you all a little bit of what this actually looks like. We're also going to go ahead and tame. Shit. My bad. Probably didn't want to do that. I failed to tame the frog. That's hilarious. All right. My, my goal will be if you get two colossal frogs and one little giant frog we can run around and i'll show you the pinnacle of animal taming with essentially three pets Does seem to be a little lag in the taming script, uh, but it's all good. I 
let's see what we're gonna do. Cause I think the timer's all messed up. We're gonna stop. We're gonna hit play. Actually, we're gonna stop. No, we're gonna play. Okay. Make sure all the timers reset and I wasn't actually actively taming. When I think I tried to tame the other beast, I think all the counters were messed up. Mm. Okay. So, essentially how taming will work for leveling this up, this is actually a good, a good opportunity for me to show y'all. And I'll show y'all all the other areas for taming. How this will work is all right so I've got I'm standing here let's act like that frog spawns like right over here somewhere right or let's act like that frog spawns uh, where, where that dead body is right there okay I would come right here I would stand right here or me like right here right here would be good as long as I'm within range to start taming the idea is the idea is do uh yellow looks good and then we'll do pencil size so if i'm right here me right i want my pet to be right here up my ass right so when frogger spawns right here he will scan and aggro my pet, which is up my ass, and not me. And I will then start to tame that pet. And as it runs over, this program, it will hit my pet, it will not hit me, and I will be taming it, and I will be safe. And then this program, once it's successful, because this is a low percent chance. This is what it'll look like for hours, by the way, when you're running the script. Once I'm successful, my character will then send, will tell this pet, this new pet, to, to stay. It will take my tank pet and tell it to kill this pet that I just tamed. And I will also start tame, killing this pet. It will die. And then we will wait for it to spawn. And then it will aggro. And then I will tame it, and then we'll kill it, and then another one will spawn, and then you, you see the, you, you see the loop. It'll hit attack my pet. I will heal my pet, and then we'll just keep taming it. And once you get the script right, as long as you're in a position where you don't have people running past you and bringing other mobs, you you, you don't want this. This is stupid. Would be stupid. You don't want that. This would be stupid. Reds may show up. W when you do this, you will only have band-aids on you, right? You, you don't need anything else. You'll just have band-aids. It may take a minute for you to kill the monster. It'll die. But you kill it, you will. You'll technically have your dagger in your hand. And you'll have fencing. So, hey, there's that. You'll run this loop. Once you set it, you can watch TV, you can watch your anime, you can watch YouTube videos. It could be some hours. You're going to let this run, and you're going to come back. And animal taming is now 1. 5, uh, 1 seal higher than when I just started to explain this to you when this went on. Ah, 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 we're killing it, we're killing it, we're killing it. Did we kill it? Oh no, Froggy died! No! All right, so it's a perfect example. We're going we're gonna to set up right here. Uh, let's set up right here. So, scan searching the area. It will not tame this. 
because it's programmed to tame the other thing. So I can stand right here, and the second it, it, it pops in, it, I'll start taming it. Because they're not aggressive, they won't attack me. If they were aggressive, they would attack Froggy right here, since Froggy is right here, right? So, you know, you stand away, this is the spawn. If this is an aggressive mob, it would run over and start attacking my pet. The, the add-on will auto-heal the pet. Pet's up your ass, right? Um, always you, pet, the mob, right? I think you get it. All right. That is taming. That is taming and AFK taming. I know you got all the way to the end, and I showed you how to do it. All right. From here, this is up to you how you want to proceed. You can AFK the whole thing, or you can AFK and uh, burn your passives. If you AFK and burn your passives, it should probably take you one to three days to do this. May maybe two, maybe two days minimum. But I would, I, I think you sh you should be able to do this in three days if you've got friends to play with you for for. For helping you out. If you don't have friends to play with you, if you're a new character, let's go find out what that's going to look like, shall we? So, but I'll show you later. All right, let me change servers real quick. What I'm going to do is, if the test server's up, let me check, because it wasn't up a minute ago. If the test server is up, I'm going to pop around to all the locations to show you how to do this. Ah, perfect. Okay. Ooh, there's a lot of mobs right there. None of the mobs, mobs are here. This is a test server. That's one of the house, no houses. Oh, perfect. Oh, wow, this is really old. All right, let's do uh, towns. Australia. Bank. Boom. Oh yeah, this is super old. This is oh it's got the Christmas guy right here. Hmm. Ah, nothing on it. Alright, if you've never been to the test server, check it out. Alright, so one second. Let's see how I don't know if you can enter uh, points of interest, maybe. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go website. So let's do... Actually, let's take this back. I'll do it on live. It'll be so much easier because i got to show you some stuff anyways. All right, so this is fine. Y'all know how to do this. So I'm going to jump on my main... All right. Follow me. Here, we're going to go to uh, Casual Crusaders, my guild house, table of followers, the stable. Uh, first, after you hit, ah, after you hit 80, Taming, the next thing you're going to want to do is get you a scarab beetle, right? You need a scarab. What you can do with that is go to. Uh, where is that? Easy way to be would go from uh, Cambria. Uh, fuck me. Hold on. Forgot I can't. I pulled an alt. Go to the Cambria Moon Gate. Take the road. Run up the road. Ooh. Head of the desert. You should also be able to, and this may be a little bit more saner. Uh. Nope. This is insane. All right, you're going to want to run over here to, like, the Osware area. I believe it's here, if I recall, is where the scarabs are. 
and you're going to retain a Scarab. They're very tanky. You want the Scarabs. Very, very tanky. Um, so I'm just going to be lazy and go to... There we go. Oh. I'm going to show you that. Let's do uh, Osprey. I want to make sure I know how to get you there. Or I've told you how to get go to the right place. So, bear with us. We have a Derp Derp Pet. So, come on. Come on, Grandpa. I think it's over here by the watering pool. If it's not, I'm just gonna laugh. It. What I get for doing it on the fly? I don't remember where the scarabs are. Oh, that's amazing. I could look it up, but I think this is just pretty funny. You can make a YouTube video on the fly. Ah, oh, son of a gun. I knew they... You know what? I was right. I was right. That was wrong. Come on, Fred. That's the only thing I don't like about the game is uh, your pets. They do not run fast. So, it is... This. Oh here. This watering hole, not that watering hole. Hopefully we can sneak right by there. Perfect. Perfect. So you go to Ossuary. And then you just run through here. You run past right here. Circle in right here. And here are the Scarabs. Uh, you'll want something with like be honest this is kind of a shitty one high wrestling high hit points and armor would be kind of nice uh to be frank i looked for something back in the day when i tamed this with like that's actually pretty fucking decent go and tame that put on put on my armor okay And it's tamed. And I got him. Uh, watch out for the sand crawlers. Yeah, let's talk shit. Alright. Uh, so you'll come over here. He'll tame you a beetle. Uh, or scarab. You want to make sure that scarab is bound. So get you three DPS pets. And a scarab. And what you can do with that will be, let's go to home. Uh, actually, let's go to craft. I'm curious on something real quick. So, if we go to Prevelia, might as well show you all this system. It'll be a little tidbit of information for manually just watching all of this. Here's the stable in Prev. Uh... Go to stable of followers. And is it this vendor here? So this is the stable master. You can access your stable and manage all of your pets right here. This just got an overhaul. Check out the patch notes for everything um, that just got here. 
So you can now sell pets. Um, so I've got this snow drift listed for 400,000 gold. Will it sell? I don't know. Uh, but I'll be honest. Oh, never mind. That was on the main page. That's for 350. That's for 30k. I have sold. I made a couple, a couple like like maybe 200,000 gold so far on pet sales. So we've got Frederick right here, uh, and then you've got the broker right here, and you've got a buy, and these are all the pets in the game. Uh, we'll go over to the scarab. This ju this just got literally implemented last weekend. Um, like the first like. No, this weekend. It was like the first week of December. They got implemented. So we'll go to Scarab. 35. There are Scarabs going for 2 million gold. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, price. Uh, some are going for all the way from 500 gold, which would be a steal. So there you go. You want to just buy it. Uh, these are mostly all reds. Uh, I'm just going to randomly... Just because I think it'd be funny. Access stable. We're gonna go over here to a scarab. We're gonna set a price for him. And I don't know, what do you think? 50k? Oh. Look at that info again. Uh posi, 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 posi. Ah, 50,000 gold. Whatever. Fuck it. If it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. I'm gonna throw it away later. Uh anyways. That is the art of taming a pet and posting it for sale. I wasn't planning on making that in the video, but we did. All right, this is the thing I wanted to show y'all is... Get my stable back. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let me just run over here, and then we'll go get the pet here in a minute. I have... I do. All right. So I, I, I can teleport to it, but I'll show y'all manually. So from... Prevelia. If you come over here, we gotta go to uh, Caldraco's house. Caldraco's house has a library for that website that I just showed you. Uh, so, tameoutlands.com, right? Uh, there is a rune library. It's at Caldraco's rune library. It's right here in Prevelia, and it's got all the books. Literally, it's on the website how to do this. It's got all the books, and I believe he's got a vendor there that, for overpriced, will sell you recall scrolls. So you can add the recall scrolls to the Holy Grail book, and from there, then you can recall to um, the 50 to 70 Shelter Island. Uh, it used to only go to 75, by the way, so now you can go to 80 on Shelter. This has been a while since it's been updated. Uh, but the Drake Whelps, a second spot for the Drake Whelps. The deep crawlers, right? You're gonna, I'm sorry, you're gonna spawn at the deep crawlers. Deep crawlers, three spawns for deep crawlers. The drakes, you know, you're gonna do the drakes, the drake twos, and then you see where you're going. You're going right down the list. After you get to 105, after uh, you'll do the snow drifts. Do snow drifts for 105. Uh, they sell for. If you get a really good snow drift, you can sell it for like a half a million gold easy. Um, but. Decent ones, you could probably sell a decent snowdrift for like 100k. After that, you're taming inside of dungeons. So you'll just teleport to the dungeon. But that's how you get there. To get to this guy's house, if you did not understand by, based off the picture, it is right here. You go to Prevelia. Nope. I ran too far. That was my bad. You need, we need to go to South Prevelia, which is here. It's tripping me out being so zoomed in. So you'll run down here. We're going to run through South Prev, which if you've never been here, is really cool. It's a really good place to, uh, to buy um, mats. Not a lot of people know about South Prev. Everybody's always in North Prevelia. They don't know about the gutters of South Prevelia. All right. I'm pretty sure, but I just want to be on the safe side. Yep. All right. 
you can run over here. You walk out the entrance. And right here is... There it is. This is the Count's house, Cal Droco. So you walk in here, and there's his famous uh, library. Looks like he's building a bigger library right here. Um, you can buy recall scrolls for 150 uh, for 10 scrolls. So he is clearly selling deals of a lifetime. He fucked up the price on that, so I don't need it. Anyways, you come over here, open the book. Here's the book. You get the point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my uh, my guild. And we're gonna walk through the setup for the different mobs. I want you to be successful. I get into 150. Obviously, I'm not going to be taming them. Um, I think you get the gist on how to tame based off of the professionally drawn NFL drawing layout right here. But we're going to go to the uh, Seal Master. I'm going to grab my uh, Scarab. And then I'm going to go back to Cal's house. Oh. You'll want to add that to your book if you don't have it. Um, if you don't have a book, I ha we'll get into it, but like, I highly recommend if I haven't said it already. Um, uh, if, if I haven't said it already in, in an earlier video, cause it's going to be a multi-video thing. While you're leveling on, if this, especially if this is your first account and you, you're not established, join a guild, find friends, join a guild, uh, casual crusaders, always recruiting, reach out. Uh, that's my guild. Well, it's the guild I'm in. Um, <clears throat> ask people for money when you first start playing the game. Say, hey, I'm new. Anybody mind helping me out? Maybe a, a room book or something like that. Uh, room books are about 20k gold, and then you you will also need a uh, 10,000 gold uh, little little bind it die. It's really not that bad, but they'll help you out. If not. That's where it comes in. If you're a do-it-all kind of a guy or gal, we'll walk you through it. Make a gatherer on a second account. So while all this is AFK and it's mind-numbing, go make a gatherer. After about 10 hours of gathering, you can have a million gold. No lie. Uh, I will throw my man's video, if I remember, down in the description. If I forget, I'm going to show you the video right now. Perfect. I wanted to look it up. So go to YouTube, type 12 hours a lumberjack. Our man, man, Crumpet made a really good video. I don't know about you, but the older I on, get, the more tired I quite get. Quite frankly, it's playing not a lumberjack, an exact right? cause and effect. It's just. Um, he did his lumberjack. He got his lumberjacking all the way to 100. Oh, that's a fun video. You know, we'll just pause it here. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He made a fun video on playing a lumberjack for 12 hours. I think he ended up playing it for 13 hours. He got to GM lumberjacking. Uh, and he made, I think, about 800,000 gold doing it. So you're going to be doing this a lot longer. So if you start this on a weekend, you're like, fuck, there's going to be a lot of AFK macroing. Create a second account. Do lumberjacking. I highly recommend lumberjacking right now. It's a little bit better than uh, mining. It used to always be mining was king, lumberjacking's not king, and it's so much easier to do. Do lumberjacking, check out this man's video, 12 hour lumberjack. I don't have a guy to lumberjacking. Uh, grab an axe, smash fucking tree. It's lumberjacking. Um, but yeah, you will make enough gold. If you knock that out for about 10 hours, you're fucking set. You're gonna get to the end of the game. You'll probably have so much gold, you can go right into all your in-game books and all, and all your stuff. Gather while you're doing this, if this is your only character and you haven't done it yet. It, perfectly fine to be doing this. Alright, let me show you. 
We're gonna go here. We're going to the uh, the Drakes, or sorry, the Deep Crawlers. So there's already some recall scrolls in here. I'm gonna be a bro about this and uh, use the recall scroll because I'm cheap as fuck. All right, so we're gonna go to the Deep Crawler one. Boom, we're at Deep Crawler one. I hit all stay with my pet. That's fucking phenomenal. Give me a second. Recals. Son of a bitch, dude. My hand was off on the keys. Sorry, I meant to hit all follow. Uh, deep crawler two. Why not? All right, there's the deep crawler. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk up. We're gonna get into position. I'll guard. I'll follow. Just to get that first one going. Um. So pet, me, crawler. Ideally, I would probably do this right here, right? What you can do. Oh, well, that's kind of funny. Animal tame is 57.6. Apparently, I just left it running the entire time. All right, so I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm going to go over to my main. Uh, heal. We're going to go over to... Uh, sorry. Uh, scripts. Scripts, 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 scripts. It always fucks me up when I uh, resize those. All right. Uh, level taming. Boom. Play. Select my pet. Now go. You cannot tame beyond 120. Let's act like this started to work. Okay. I'm technically 120 taming. It, it will not let... It, yeah, the script is like fucking foolproof. So, all right. We're taming. We're taming. We're taming. This is shitty fucking the demo. I just realized this. Oh, no. Three hours have gone by. We first tame it. It will all kill it. And then this is what it looks like when you start all killing. Your character will start punching it. This thing will stay still. Your tank will start punching it. You may accidentally equip a really fucking good weapon. <laughs> Obviously, you don't tame it right on, right on that. All right, so fuck. You can farm backpacks. That's hilarious. All right, so we're not gonna move the pet. So the entire the idea is you stand right here. You do absolutely nothing. Script will be scanning for the monster. If you, if we go back right now, we're searching the area. We're at fifty seven point six animal taming. Already taken care of, right? Like, this is automatically working. I could go to bed right now and come back, and this should be, like, 60-something. Like, you can do this in increments to where you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to run this thing. It's going to play. Maybe a red kills me. Maybe it fucking doesn't. I'm going to bed. You come back. Look at it in the morning. You're dead. Ran out of bandages, or a red killed you five seconds after you walked away. You go back. You get more bandages. Run your reset back up, run your script, you go to work, you come home, you are where you are, you pick it back up and do it again. You could do that. It may take you about seven days to do it, but you can technically do it. This is just now waiting on the monster to spawn. I can't demo you what it actually look like, but take it from me. It's going to look a lot like this. Search in the area, search in the area, search in the area. And then, this is perfect. There's nothing here. So, let's just act like right here is right here. This mob will respawn, and it'll auto-attack my pet. What you want to do, though, when you're setting this up, I've done this a few times, so I kind of have some of the spots figured out. I'll be honest, I'm not even 100% on this one. Uh, but you kind of get the gist of it after you've done it a few times. Before you go AFK the very first time, Make sure when the damn thing respawns, it'll actually attack and the whole thing will set up. After that, you're, you're gold. 
All right, so there's the Lurker. He spawned off into fucking Narnia. We may not get him. This may not be a good spot. But we would come back like 10 hours later. Maybe we get him. Maybe we don't. We can do. Do this. And like maybe that would have grabbed his attention or something like that, right? Set it up, tame him, whatever. Recall out, let him fucking reset, come back later. Uh, however you want it, you just, no, I'm just, don't recall out. Like, tame it, kill it. Whatever you want to do, you want to wait for it to respawn, and you want to make sure that the, that it's working. So this is the, t this is the, these are the deep crawlers, this is where that is. Um... How I was positioned earlier is probably the ideal way of setting that up. Fucking shit, I didn't want to go here. Hang on a second, guys. Uh... The cow's house. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna walk you through the different, the different areas. Let's do, we'll just take all these, we'll drop them in there. It'll help out some new players. All right, so we're done with the deep crawlers. We're gonna go to the Drakes. Uh, Drake one, why not? <sighs> this one's interesting. This is where you're gonna want make to make sure before you start doing this, your vet skill needs to be 80. Don't fuck around with this stuff, all right, guys. the The prior one is easy. This is where it gets hard. Um, if you've been doing the AFK stuff and you've got enough to buy your aspect, buy your aspect, right? I mean, you just saw that dragon. So essentially, what you're gonna have to deal with is th the dragons. You need to get it to where one dragon right here, there will be a Drake that should spawn. Like that guy did it wrong. Cause he's, he's fucking here clearly. Uh, you will want to get the one dragon for AFK in this. You get the one dragon aggro to your guy. You'll know where the Drake spawns. Don't do this if there's another Tamer next to you. But essentially you want that dragon to always be hitting your pet. That's the dragon that'll spawn here. The other Drake, see how I'm set up already? You know, I've got the dragon. Fuck the dragon. He's just gonna he's gonna hit this thing endlessly. So I'm here. We're gonna get set up right here. I want my ass up the fucking ass of this rock. I want to be deep in the rock. The pet is deep in my ass. So now if the Drake spawns, when the Drake spawns, it should technically aggro my pet. If it doesn't work. We need to reposition and reset, right? Let's see here. So, if I remember correctly, in this spot, the uh, the Drake, I believe, spawns around here. My pet is right here. I am right here. The dragon is obviously right there. Um, wish that fucking script would run. All right, so when he aggro's, he should aggro to my pet, and when he does, then I will begin taming. Um, I will have been healing the whole time. I'm always healing, right? We're we'll always be healing. That script will auto keep this alive. The script's not working right now because, to be quite frank. I'm, it's not running, right? Because I'm already 120 taming, it's not working. So you would essentially stand there and you're just gonna have to tax, tax this. All right, so that's where one of the Drake spawn. All right, he's hitting the Scarab. So with that, we would immediately start uh, taming him. The Drake whelp 
this spawn. I mean, it's not good. I'll put it this way. It's probably not a great spot where we're at right now. Um, so you got to get a feel for this stuff. Uh, pay attention to the spawns where they first spawn and, and position yourself around that. You may spend 20 minutes or so doing this. And that's okay. Uh, just so you're aware, my pet's not taking all this damage because I also have my command aspect on. But I'm not paying attention to it. But this could get froggy. It really could. Um, and your scarab may die and you may die because of that so it's one of those things like that's why I say gather if while you're doing this because you just take it throw it on your side monitor pay attention to it what do you got some bandages from your from your bank who fucking cares you're on your alt account you've got your free house by the way you've got your free house because this is a brand new character did I get yeah, it's not the first one on the account so when you create your character on your new account it is a new character this is definitely not the, the place to be standing because I've got way too many mobs y'all would be dying uh, if, it, if you didn't have command 13 unlocked uh, but find the position make sure it works and I feel like there's a drake that spawns right around here as well but I don't want to die so we're going to go over to cows Damn it. That's dangerous. I just want to walk that straight line. Get stuck on the vendors. Uh, let's check out Drake 2, because I know that wasn't a good demo. Ah! Here. Go to Drake 2. There is reds that roll through here, but Drake 2 is where it's at. Those two Drakes are already released, so there is a Drake and a Drake Welpling. Go to Drake 2. I highly apologize. I'm sitting here like, what the fuck is going on with the spawn? This is ridiculous. There's a Drake there, a Drake there, a Drake there. That's the Drake you can tame, and a Drake there. So that was a shitty tamer that was over there. He wasn't killing his Drakes. That's a good one, and... Oh my god, this, this place is AIDS. These are all released. There should be a normal Drake. That's a normal Drake in there. That should be released. Yeah. The released ones you would want to clean up, or the macro could get hung up. But you would come in here, run through. This is a bad run. You would run out. You don't want all this shit on you. Sorry, I needed to open that bag because stupid scripts not registering. <sighs> um, wow, this thing's just gonna run for not forever, isn't it? I guess you could run up and tame it, but you get the gist. Run in, play it smart. If you want to, you could run in, grab this, walk away. We've got this. I'll guard. I'll follow. It's on him now. Right here, we're not worrying about this. If you weren't AFKing and then, you know, start gaming, right? If you wanted to, you could technically roll in. Like right here would probably be the smartest things to do. Uh, you roll in. The other shit that you just brought in with you wouldn't be there, right? Um, you got the whelp and the drake knocking out business. You're taking care of stuff. I would position myself like up the ass of this area right here. These other drakes wouldn't be there, so just bear with me, man. Role play like this fucking shit ain't here. Um, make sure you do an all guard, do an all follow. All guard will rip all the aggro to your pet. I'll, I'll follow. We'll make it so your guy's not attacking. So now you've got the Drake Whelp and the Drake. You won't do anything about the Drake Whelp. It'll just keep hitting you the entire time you're there. Just think of it like a, a bandage tax. And then essentially the name of the game is the other Drake will spawn. You'll still heal through the Drake's damage. You'll tame the Drake. You'll kill the Drake. And you'll keep on going. Like these are release Drakes that should not be here. You want to clear that out. All right. Go to Drake 2. Do not do Drake 1. 
That was my bad. I was sitting here staring at this. I was like, I remember doing Drake 1. And, like, it's just fucking miserable. All right, so Drake 2 is where it's at. Uh, Dragon Whelps is after that. Uh, probably Dragon Whelps 2. I'd assume it takes right back to the same place. Yeah, this is actually a good spot. Um, so you're here. Is that Dragon Whelp 2? Uh, it's going to be right there. Let's go back. Let's check out Dragon Whelp 1. That's not a terrible one. Let's check out Dragon Whelp 1. That one's not bad, but I feel like the Bone Collector there is a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you need to do it, you need to do it. Those are what, Dragon Whelps? Dragon Whelps. I wonder if the other one, the other ones are Drake Whelps. All right, Dragon Whelp 1. Ah, same island. Same island. I think Dragon Whelp 1, is, this is the one I remember doing right here is you kind of like end up standing right here, the pet's right here, Dragon Whelp will spawn right here. You know, you do your thing. You are establish that if you need to. You could do it up where the other one was with the Bone Collector. You shouldn't be running around up, up here because there's going to be a lot of shit that'll fuck you up. Just remember, you're very weak at this point. You don't have good pets. Your, your character is not strong. So, stay here. Bide your time. Get the macro running. This is a game of patience. Alright. Alright, Husk Crabs. Check out these spawns. Uh, that location's been blocked. Probably someone placed the house. Boom. Husk... Damn, if that's not the fucking spot. Hush Crab 2. Roll in. Um, This guy's technically here. With this fucking aspect on and everything. That's lovely. Uh, if you've got a... If you have a thief on a second account, this is a perfect opportunity to come over here. Steal all this guy's bandages. Watch him die. Laugh. Set up your macro when his body turns into bones. Loot as shit. Boom, there you go. Or just fucking kill him and take the count. The odds of someone else rolling through here that's not a red that's gonna kill you anyways, pretty low. I just fucking kill him. So take that, take the spot, take the crab. You get to go. Um go back here. We'll check out the other husk crab too as well. We'll we're gonna check these out. We'll talk through the spots. That was a really good setup, though. Huskrab 1 was a really good setup. Fuck! Huskrab 2. If only I was a mage, this would be so much easier, but you shouldn't be teleporting around that much anyways. Did I go to Huskrab 1? I don't remember that. Oh, that's right. Location was blocked. So that's your location. If you need to move, you could probably move. Um, I'm sure there's some other husk crabs around there. Let's check out the dragons. So we've got four dragon spots. Uh, it should be starting to show a pattern by this point, guys. Like, you get there, you set it up. I remember the guy, like, when I first learned taming, there was a guy that explained it to me um, in text of the game. After you kind of get the very first one done, uh, the dragon one, he showed me Drake... Was it Drake 1? And I was having trouble with that. And then he showed me Drake 2. And I was like, oh, this is so much easier. And then I figured out about this book. And then everything started clicking. I did taming like two weeks into starting UO. Or after like 20 years of not playing it. Um, so this was a learning curve for me. So I want it to be easy for y'all. And I hope it's easier for all. Uh, let's go to Dragons. Oh, we're back at this fucking hellhole. Um, fuck me. All right. Oh. 
That one may not be bad for dragons. You just gotta be careful with it. Oh, it's dragons do. Dragons do. Go to dragons do. Watch this. Oh shit. Damn, that thing almost fucking dropped me. Anyways, uh, I think uh, Dragon Two would be fine uh, after like you reset that because your pet would be closer, right? Um, I think it's because we teleported in that it was like how it worked was a little rigged. I would pay, take my get my bets on this one. Um, it looks like if you stay far enough away, the whelps don't come. So this would be a good idea. I, I think I did this one, this spot right here, is when I level Tammy for the second time because I dropped it and went summon her once. Um, when I level Tammy the second time, I want to say that it was this one here. All right. I'll let you figure out the other two dragons if you need to do that. All right, so we're doing dragons. We're going to the snowdrifts. Snowdrifts are really good. Again, you can sell those for money. You may not be doing snowdrifts right away. Uh, because obviously, oh, sorry, you would literally stay where I think you were just at. Um, but there's a snowdrift right there. That shit, we're gonna walk around for a minute. Snowdrifts. That's, they're selling for a lot of money, so I might as well just lure them real quick, so it's out here. That's garbage. And that's everything. I think there's more, like, way over there. Alright, those are the snowdrifts, and after that, you're off to the races. Now you're in dungeons. Um, the guide in the dungeons is about the same thing. Um, I'm not going to explain it, because by then, I hope that you figured it all out. My ambition. If not, come check me out on Twitch. But... Here, after you get done with the snowdrifts, you'll go into Nucero level 2, to which you have to tame Earth Drakes. After, uh, once you go to here, your AFKing is done. You're, you're not going to AFK in the dungeons. There's too much fucking reds. There's too much shit going on. You need to pay attention. Uh, you can still do lumberjacking. You just need to be able to react to shit. Like, the odds of you being able to walk away and come back, like, an hour later, slim. Uh, the odds of you being able to sit back and watch some anime for an hour, not bad, because you'll probably be needing to adjust here and there. So, th after that, you're going to do... Uh, uh, Nucero 2 is the hard one to AFK. That one you need to pay attention to. Ossuary 3, stupid easy. Uh, stupid, stupid easy to figure this one out. So, it's Ossuary 3, it's in the Sphinx room, you'll start taming the Sphinxes. Uh, there's only like one other spawn in that room. So if you can get it just right, this one you can kind of AFK. I'd keep an eye on it just because if a uh, red rolls through, it's pretty likely that they'll come and kill you. But they usually ignore the Sphinx room because they know is all they're going to get is some fucker with bandages and nothing on them. Um, after that, uh, you're going down to Nucero level 3 where you're going to be doing uh, Earth Dragons. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Earth Drakes. You can, on Nucero 2, I was thinking it was 3, Nucero 2, you could probably AFK these. Um, just pay attention. Like, you don't want to, like, 5-hour AFK it, like, 15, 20 minutes and stuff like that. Nucero 3 is right at the heart where everybody farms. You'll need to pay attention to this one. But that's going to get you, all you need to do there, you're going to show up at 115 skill. The second you hit 4.1 passive skill or higher, um, you're done. Grab your pet, grab your main pets back out. Probably snow snowdrifts, right? Probably snowdrifts. Go grab your five snowdrifts and fucking go have fun. Go kill some shit. Uh, finish up to 120. And you're at 120, Tammy boys. What's up, everybody? So we've reached the end of the ultimate taming guide. I hope y'all have enjoyed the journey. I know I have. So, what we're here today is to go through 
now that you've leveled up your character, it's time to show you the potential of what a day one character will look like as you've completed um, your leveling process. We won't be going into what your character is going to look like with all your in-game systems turned on, your aspects. Uh, we will have your codex uh, just so I can show you what it's going to look like when you just purchase them. But these codexes are brand new, right? So no aspects, no chain, no codexes. This is literally you just got done macroing your skills up. What's this going to look like to you? Please take into account this is not looking to be if you all if you did not opt in to doing any gathering or any other things on the side while you were lovely taming. Although if you weren't watching my other videos, I highly recommend if you're going to level up taming, since a lot of it can be done AFK, please make a second account. Go do lumberjacking, go do mining, make that money, because that money can then be go in to buy all of your in-game systems that you will so desperately need. Um... Do that so that that way you're setting yourself up, up for success. And this grind that I'm about to show you is not as hard as what it's going to be for me. Now, what do I mean by that? So starting off, we've got seven skills all at 100. We 7x this character. So we've got animal taming, animal lore, herding, and veterinary skills. Those are your four core animal taming skills. Uh, so taming and lore, so you can control pets and make them stronger uh, passively through skill points. Uh, animal uh, herding will allow you to increase your pet damage uh, just with herding. It will allow you to do focused aggression, which further increases pet damage and lowers the rate uh, at which they take damage from the creature that you happen to be focusing. Veterinary skills increases pets damage passively and also allows you to heal your pets, resurrect your pets, and allows you to heal yourself and resurrect other humans. Veterinary skill is O fucking P. Those four abilities, animal taming, animal lore, herding, and vet, should all be at 120 skill points. But we're going to do this video as if you did not have a single coin to your name and you had to stop here. If you did uh, the smarter thing and you went and did craft, uh, not crafting, if you went to gathering, then you should be able to go out and buy all the skill scrolls to unlock taming and herding, lore, and vet to 120, and the 20 skill orbs you would need. You would then have macroed those to 120, and fencing, uh, arms lore, and tactics would all be at 80. But this is to say you didn't want to do that you wanted to go in for it hard this is what this will look like now what i'm going to be demoing today is a 7x character 7x gm character uh we have no aspects unlocked um so we've got show only unlocked aspects there is no aspects unlocked i have no aspect charges um this character is well is got just some typical uh, exceptional bone chest some bone armor i think it looks cool um, you could do some ch cheap ass plate if you want to bones even cheaper from my loadout kit it's pretty basic uh, we've got a golden Chris so it gives a little bit of extra accuracy a little bit of damage um, gold is super cheap and we've got a golden shepherd's hook to help uh, add on some additional damage for our herding abilities uh, both of these you can purchase both of them for a total should be under 4,000 uh, total for both of them not each I think you can find these for like 1500 gold 1500 gold right, right. Uh, Vet supplies uh, walk down with about a hundred per run uh, Get you a food don't be cheap on it um, a little bit of adventures rope for teleporting uh, about a hundred bandages um, I came down with 20 healing pots, but I got hit a few times. Probably want to bring about 30 healing pots if you can. Uh, greater cure potions are always fun. If you don't have all the potions, just roll into it. As you do a run or two, you can start buying the kegs for your other potions, but highly recommend at least getting a keg of uh, greater healing right off the bat. Kegs are pretty cheap. Um, I got a 
skinny knife for when I'm feeling lazy and I can't click on the mob, so I just run a skinny macro so it auto opens all the windows near me. It's kind of like a way to AoE loot. I don't actually take the leather. I don't have any skinning. Um, you could take the leather if you so inclined. I just feel like it's going to weigh me down. This is just me being fucking lazy. Um, but this is technically an ex uh, exceptional skinny knife. You could also go to the vendor in the city and just buy a whole lot of them for like 20 gold each. Um, be very, very frugal with that. Just, just, just don't even worry about it. Um, all right, so in my inventory, you will have noticed I've got all the different codexes, and I've got the Tammy Bestiary. That's because uh, this is the test server. I did not level this character. I am not a sadist. Um, I just logged on the Guinness and handed him all my codexes that were on my main. This is the test server. What do I care? But I just so y'all are aware, um, all of these codexes on this character, nothing is unlocked. Nothing is unlocked on the bow. Nothing's unlocked on the, uh, what is this, uh, the parry. Uh, nothing's unlocked on wrestling. Nothing on swords. And only a little bit, 35% of the very first point has been unlocked on fencing. Because A, we're doing fencing, and B, I killed about three mobs on the way down because I wanted to make sure this build worked so I didn't look like a horse ass while recording. It works. Spoiler. Um, and then in the beast, uh, Bestiary Codex, this is going to be the first thing you need to prioritize. You need the Bestiary Codex, first and foremost. And you definitely, definitely, definitely need the Fencing Codex. You have to, you really need to get these as fast as humanly possible. Uh, level 3 dungeons are going to be doable, but for new players, it's going to be tough to go down to like Aegis 3. Um, highly recommend if you're going to go down a level 3 dungeon, probably do Aegis 3. Um, the reason I say this is because you need to be aware of mobs and mobs and mechanics. I've put hundreds of hours in Aegis 3 and uh, Darkmire 3, so I feel confident I can go down there. But as a new player, just know. It may not look as easy as what I'm going to make this out to be, but that's just because of player skill and not because of a difference of player power. Um, I will say give it about a 5% difference just in full transparency. The pets that I am using are uh, fully capped out pets that were generated. I know, I know. Just yell at me all you want in the comments. I, I'm not going down to Mausoleum on the test server and taming five pets and just to do this. Uh, like, it's not that it's going to be insignificant. I would just add an additional, let's say, five to seven seconds on each one of the mobs that I kill, and we'll call it a day. What I don't, what I want y'all to know is it's doable. Um, honestly, you you should spend time as a tamer to get make sure that your attack speed, melee damage, and wrestling. I would say anything positive on attack speed is fine, even 0.1%. Uh, melee damage, I would look for something that's probably 5 to 7% uh, in the green. Wrestling, I would probably not do anything less than 8% on these mobs. So you're going to want to look for that. You could spend a few hours looking for some vampire bats and mausoleum. All, all, all your call. Take take a Sphinx with you. Take not a Sphinx. Uh, take a uh, oh my God a Scarab with you. Uh, we showed how to tame that during the leveling guy. Take your Scarab. Do the things that you already know how to do. Tame your mobs. Get in. Get out. You can tame five vampire bats of random fucking variety, and then you can come back and working on improving them over time. Y'all's call, right? These are leveled up as well. They're all level ten. So just note, these bats will get stronger. You may not run directly down to level 3. Level 2 was very easy. So with these bats, so I came to level 3. Level 3 doesn't seem to be much of a challenge either for some of the lightweight mobs in Aegis 3. We like Aegis 3 because level 3 mobs are not as challenging as some of the other dungeons level 3 mobs. But Aegis Keep is like the dungeon for new players. So it's... This is kind of the place to be, to be honest with you. Um, I also like it because it's blood theme and it's red and it looks really fucking cool. So, the aesthetics help. So, what I want to show y'all, and if you haven't already, I will just loosely go over a lot of the mechanics. Um, but I do have a mechanics guide in the leveling video. Um, so, I'm not going to go into details uh, here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to walk up, walk guard. We're going to do our focus aggression macro. 
We will grab this spider or this snake. I'm sorry. So we're going to hit all guard and we're going to refocus back onto this mob. We're going to start healing. And this is it, right? Like, this bandage is being rough right off the start. Two mobs is going to be a little rough for this build. My god, we're not healing at all. Alright, so we're transitioning into the vet supplies. We're going to keep going. All right, we got our pet back up. Our refocus aggression. We're gonna keep doing vet supplies. All right, we got that mob down. See, easy. I got a little froggy there. Uh, just so y'all are aware, these these other ones that are just called vampire bats, I do not have taunt on. Um, oh my god, I explained. I me personally, this is how Laguna's plays. I only run with aggro turned on to my main pet, and that's because I have a macro that I spam. I just hit the E button. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You know what? Owen. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We got a dungeon weapon. I got an Aegis Keep dungeon weapon. On my second kill in the dungeon. I have never seen that before in the game. Anyways, so it's always fun to get on the test server because you realize that's when all the good loot drops. All right, so we just killed two mobs. Uh, that was pretty eventful. We're going to go back in our bestiary. We're going to look. I was at, I think, 60%, and now, uh, now I'm level 1 of 20, and I'm already 10% in, guys. So, all right, we're at 9%. We'll go pull another mob. We'll show you the kills. But the experience, from what I can tell, in the bestiary, for a bestiary codex, the experience is going very, very quick. So I'm going to highly recommend get your bestiary codex first. I will say, um, if you're feeling very squishy, if you're feeling like a little squishy boy, uh, you do definitely want to get your weapon codex as fast as possible as well. You will be working on the defense first and foremost. Get defense to tier 5. Um, then get all the other ones to tier five. So that way you only need to get to the fifth rank right here. You don't need to go to all seven. And once you get the fifth rank, you'll do, you will unlock a tier of your weapon finisher. So do five down the board. Defense will go first. Uh, once you get your first weapon finisher, you're going to open up flurry. Flurry gives you an increased attack speed. And I hate to say it, but with fencing, it's all about attack speed. So you get more procs, so you lower their defense. So you increase your pet's chance of accuracy, and yada, 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 yada. You can run assassinate if you want, but... Sure. Um, stay in defense. Don't... Just fucking stay in defense. Uh, once you're done getting tier 5 on all of these, you're going immediate to 7 on defense. After that, it's just spend the experience points so you unlock everything, guys. Uh, defense, if you don't know, essentially what this does is weapon swings will increase your damage resistance to all enemies by 4% per rank for 5 seconds. So as long as you're swinging your weapon at five, rank 5, right? Uh, rank, time, rank 5 times 4, 20 points. So that's 20 defense rating. All right, so this is what it's going to look like going into a uh, mob by itself. We don't have the, sp uh, the snake. Almost that spider again. So this is easy, easy. We don't have the poison with the double damage. All right. Here's our B-Siri Codex again. We're at 9%. We're at five, 59 points. Uh, 59%, 59.5%, right? We'll check in what these look like. They're so going from 95 to 25.5%. So that's 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 ridiculous. That's what 50 16 per, uh, percent on a kill. 16% on a kill for an entire level. Like what the heck? I don't know if they made it to where the later levels require more experience or not, but this is really 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 good. So what we're going to start doing in here is we're going to go in here and I think it's lethality. 
Is melee attacks and spellcasts have a 10% chance to inflict 100% damage? That's a good one. Um, hunting party will uh, damage dealt is increased by 10% if creature and tamer are within one tile. That's really good. That's an immediate 10% damage. Swarm, it increases uh, 2% uh, times the number of followers controlled. So that would be another 10% damage. So we're going to do hunting party. We're going to spend one point. Get the 10% immediate damage. All right, this is where it's going to be fun. We're going to go for here. We are going to pop a magic resist potion. I aggroed them both. We're going deep. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I saw a move. I saw a move. All right, we got him. Let me heal this vampire bat right here. We need to turn off his aggro. Perfect. We're gonna roll van uh veterinary. Look at that. Look at that. Lesser blood demon. Day one, day one character, right? Day one character. We just got done leveling. We're in level three, soloing lesser demons. We're okay. Doesn't look like he's doing his lightning ability, so we're good. We'll refocus aggression. Why not? All right, we're all healed up. We're going to focus back in on a bandage. We did a couple of vet supplies there just to top everything off. They are 1,200 gold, guys. We just got 1,200 gold. We got a uh, little uh, magic item, a couple of uh, gems, some regs. We'll take it all but the scrolls, baby, all but the scrolls. All right, now with this, we're going to come in. We're going to do the focus aggression. It was probably not the smartest idea. I should have done an all guard me. We'll do all guard. We'll bring it back a little bit. The re reason we're bringing it back uh we're gonna pop another pot i don't think the pot was necessarily worth it i was kind of curious how he was going to do lightning so we're going to do a vet supplies right here five seconds for a vet supplies topped off everything then we're going to do a bandage single target heal Big, big heal. We're going to keep rolling bandages right now. We're going to roll a vet supplies. We don't want to be burning all of our potions or else we're going to run out real quick. All right. We're going to run another another vet supplies. We're just going to keep chaining it. We're going to refocus up our focus aggression. Vet, vet, vet. And there you go. Look at there. We got research materials. So in this first run as a brand new player, we've got an Aegis Dungeon Sword, which is, I swear to God, I want to say that's got to be worth something crazy because uh, I don't ever see that in game. Research materials. I want to say research materials are like 40,000 gold. We got two magic items. We got this and that. So we've made 5,000 gold since I started talking to y'all. We're 19 minutes in. Obviously, I'm not going as fast as I humanly can because I'm talking to y'all. Um, and we've made, I would argue, roughly uh, a fair amount of gold. Now, I'm actually curious at what that weapon's going to be running. but So y'all get the point. We're going to roll up here. I'm going to roll into this. It's going to hit me with its Bukaki stream. Maybe, 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 maybe not. We're going to be careful of the snake. Usually I don't care so much when you watch me play on stream, but we we need we want to play one mob at a time, right? You don't want a second mob. Uh, focused aggression is really good at making your pets tanky against the target that you focused aggress. The other targets, if you have multiple targets, they hurt, guys. So you just want one target right now. Don't Don't be a hero. Don't be a hero. Get rich. Then be heroes. So, I just wanted to demo this and show y'all that it works. 
Uh, obviously, Aegis Keep may not always be an optimal place to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Hey, we got another point in our Taming Bestiary. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to go to Taming Bestiary. Uh, we're going to go over to Swarm, and we're going to rank up Swarm. All right. So now we've gotten 20% damage to our pets. Uh, this one I'm kind of curious on. Oh, we've aggroed it. All right, they got it. Now we got them. Let's see here. Our pets look like they're starting to do a little bit more damage. We're starting to see high 60s or high 50s now. Some 60s. There we go. We're starting to see that consistency. What I probably recommend is after this, I would probably go into. Is it feral? Feral would be good. Um, looks like these pets are doing a lot of a lot of attack damage. Um, these are the vampire bats from Mausoleum again. It looks like they're doing a fair amount. Let's roll up in here. Let's get on this guy. So we're not doing magic resist pots right now. We're just doing, um, uh, my God, we're gonna drink a potion though. We're gonna keep going hard on the, uh, on the, AO on the AOE bandages, bandage, bandage, bandage. Yep. Oh, maybe it'll help if we turn disarm on. So we've disarmed, we're starting to do big, Big damage, big damage. We're seeing the 70s. Look at the bleeds, guys. Look at the bleeds. All those 15s are the bleeds from the vampire. So that's just adding what looks to be extra points. Uh, we're going to stop doing vet supplies. We're going to start doing single target bandages. Now we're going to heal hard. Probably let that go a little too long, but it's all right. We got the monster down another 1,600 gold. We'll take the dregs. We'll take the gems. Oh, did we get the blood worm? We got the blood worm. Look at that. What an amazing pool. We're going to do this right here. I don't want to move because we're going to aggro with this. We're going to have the blood elemental and that, that demon's about to respawn. My goal is to sneak in here and get this dragon. You got to be careful with the blood worms and the blood festers. Uh, if they hit you, they have a chance to put a very mean bleed on you. And it is mean. Most likely you will die. So be prepared. All right, we're going to come in. Bats, bats, bats. Watch the, watch the dragons. Uh, with the dragons, you don't want to be standing in front of them because they do a giant, like a nine-tile cone. So getting kind of right there behind them. He's not going to turn. He shouldn't turn at all. Dragon doesn't do too much damage. That and we just disarmed him, but we're going to go ahead and pop a little heal on him. All right. Now let's talk about mechanics, right? I think you've got the idea. The build works. Um, let's talk mechanics. Let's go find something a little, e a little easy so I can show y'all. All right, so when we run up to him, we're going to hit all guard. He'll rip onto us. Immediately, he will be grabbed onto the pets because we have all guard on. If you didn't have all guard on, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go to you. So be cognizant of that. Healing, it's within uh, one tile. Uh, I think two tiles. We've been standing still for a minute. So essentially up the ass of your pet. Um, again, you see these damages numbers aren't high, 30s, 20s. We want to focus aggress. Now we're in the 50s. Now we're in the 50s, right? We want to see that focus aggression. We want to see you attacking. The art of you attacking is just there to proc your special. 
and to proc disarm, right? You want to use disarm, uh, which is uh, bracket disarm, to toggle it on, bracket disarm, to toggle it off. You should create a macro for that. Essentially, disarm comes from having arms lore and tactics. Uh, it for It's essentially like a, another focus regression. So we'll do all guard. We'll walk up with it. With all guard, it will aggro to your pet. What you want to do is let it aggro to your pets. Play it safe. You're not very strong right now. You don't need to be taking the licks. Walk up with all guard on. Wait for it to attack you. When it, uh, I'm sorry. Wait for it to attack your pet. Once it attacks your pet, then focus aggression. If you open with focus aggression, it will hit, the monster will hit you first. The monster will hit you first. That's going to be a multi-pool. All right, let me see if I can sneak over here. So if we did right in here, focus aggression. See how I got hit? We don't want that. We don't want that because he double channeled, right? Is he going to triple channel? He's triple channeled me. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's dangerous, guys. That's dangerous. See that right there? That right there is why you do not do... That right there is why you don't do focus aggression. Especially on a mob where, like, you already don't know if you're going to be able to live through it if he double taps you like that. That was with no magic potions are on or anything like that. So, I mean, did we make it out? Yes. But, I mean, could we have done this smarter? Yes. But we got him. We got some more gold. Love it. All right. So walking up with all guard, tax my pets. We got focus aggression on. I've missed quite a bit. So keep in mind, this is no aspect. We have zero. A we don't even have an aspect unlocked right now, right? We have no aspect unlocked. We have. We will get this point, this experience point, this time. So we're gonna unlock our third thing. What I'm probably going to do is go lethal. I'm probably going to go lethal. I really like lethal. Uh, lethality. This gives all my damage a 10% chance. Melee attacks have a 10% chance to inflict plus 100% damage. Otherwise, we'll inflict 4% additional damage. Uh, lethality is probably would be one of the first things I would get to level 3. I would, I would unlock everything under the sun to level 1. Honest to God, IQ 500, guys, because you can reset these points. At While you're leveling, I would probably go through here and literally put everything at level 1 in this entire thing. Everything. Because look at this. Ambush. Uh, increases damage and damage resistance after exiting stealth. I don't exit stealth. Instant 4% damage. Uh, if I was to put another point into this, it would require 3 points. 2 points. So 2 just to get the 4% to 8% damage. So to get another 4% damage would require two points, or I go over here and put one point in here, and one point in here, and then I get the four from the first one, and then instead of another four, I've now got eight. So now I've got 12 total IQ, guys. Put a point in everything on this entire book. I mean, fuck it, why not? I just thought of it, but it makes fucking sense to me. Uh, Feral, if a creature has a bleed on it, uh, which your creatures will. The bats have bleeds. 10% chance to restore 10% max health. Damage dealt is increased by 4% if the target cannot bleed. So, probably don't want to put a point in that one right away because, I mean, you don't get the 4% uh, the damage because your target's going to bleed. So, read through it. Make it make sense to you. Um, I'll show you here in a minute what I have on the Guinness. Ah, oh, fuck it. We're already on the subject. Give me a second. I'll just log in the account real quick. All right, on main, I've got uh, here. So I've got uh, one point into Feral. 
of this right here will give a uh, while frenzied or enraged the creatures non backstab melee attacks every 15 seconds has its damage increased by 80 percent um this would go up to 240 percent so that would be really interesting damage dealt uh by four percent if this creature does not have any of those abilities so frenzied or enraged if i want to go look Abilities devour and consume nearby corpses. Bleed. Has a chance on melee to do a bleed. So we don't have a frenzy or enraged. So may not be the best thing to put a point into. Uh, my bats do, but my bats will require you to have a little bit higher skill. Um, hunting party will increase your damage by 30%. Uh, while you are in one tile of the, while you and your pets are in within one tile since you're all melee you're always going to be there that's 30 percent damage right there um it's 12 percent damage when you're out of range so you always get something out of it it's very very powerful highly recommend lethality again 30 percent chance on melee attacks to inflict a 100 percent extra damage otherwise will inflict 12 percent damage so it's 12 percent damage right there with a chance on essentially critting. I like to think that's a 30% chance for your bats to crit. That's pretty crazy. Menagerie, not that great. Uh, wouldn't really do anything there. Uh, Swarm will give you uh, six times five, 30% damage because you're rolling one slot pets. This gives you 6% damage times the total followers controlled because we have five followers, five times six and swarming, right? in front of me. We've already got 14,000 gold. That's 15,000 gold, and I'm overweight, so it's time to run out of the dungeon. So, that 30 minute run. We're not really trying hard. Uh, primal, I believe, is pretty good. A chance to trigger passive abilities is increased by 33% of normal. Um, I think I, I kind of liked it. I played with it. Uh, pelt, uh, p uh, damage dealt is increased by 8% if the target is four tiles away. Deals uh, damage increased by 4% if the target's within three tiles. So that's a 4% damage gain. Um, so like, read through it. Have fun with it, guys. Uh, but that's what I use. Um, all right. So let's see here. I talked about the all guard to, uh, what am I doing? I don't need to run out. It's a test server. Yep. All right, so we talked about the all guard. Um, all follow me disengages your pets. When you're running through a lot of mobs, what I like to do sometimes, I'll do an all follow. And then I'm running. I'll do an all guard, all follow, all guard. Grab the aggro, hit all follow again. I'll guard, I'll take the hit there, off guard, I'll follow, and right here. I'll guard, I'll follow, see what we're doing here. Casting um, AOE heal, we're doing using vet supplies, healing on the run, healing on the run, healing on the run. Watch out for the blood fester, I'll guard, I'll follow. So the second those pets turn around, I'll guard, I'm gonna die here. I was like, oh god, mages, probably not a smart thing to do. I'll guard, I'll follow. There you go. Run the vet supplies, run the vet supplies, stop for a second, let it hit, run the vet supplies. I'll follow. I'll guard. I'll follow. Ah, just run past him, he's not gonna do anything anyways. There you go, guys. There you go. That's how you run through the dungeon with absolutely no aspect. That might be a dumb thing to run through specifically. So I'm not even going to do it. I'll follow. Just keep on running. It tagged me. We're going to pop. We're going to pop. Bleed doesn't seem to be too bad. We can just burn through it. I'll follow. I'll guard. They're all on the bats. And let's solo them. There's no way. I was like, there's just no way. I 
Oh, we got a four mob pool. Maybe don't solo three dragons with the thing and then stand in the Bukaki bleed and just it's not gonna work out great for anybody. Well, let's see here. What else can we talk about? <clears throat> That's really how the character plays. There's nothing magical to it. It's a whole lot of just control your pets. Uh take the aggro and everything like that. Now again, as you start to go through this. Um, again, you're going to want to unlock your weapon codex uh, as fast as you can. Unlock your uh, bestiary codex prime very first. You want the bestiary codex first. Fencing needs to be a close second. Um, the reason why is you don't get fencing experience or bestiary codex experience unless you have this. Um, it should be the very first things that you do. Um, you can go down into a dungeon and solo farm without these. I've kind of shown y'all that, obviously. Um, but you'll be wanting to target that first. Highly recommend, again, I cannot under understell this. I cannot undersell this. Join a guild. Make friends. Lean on your friends. Lean on the established players in the community. Ask for help getting started if you want it. If you it, it, seriously, people are willing to help new players out. Um, go into a streamer's channel that's not mine. I'm just joking, but go. <laughs> I'm just joking. just go ask for people. It's okay. Um, but if you're if if it's seriously, if you like to make your own way and you don't want a handout, 100% understand it. While you're leveling, taming, and you're doing all the a uh, the AFK uh, grinding as you're just taming mobs, releasing mobs, taming mob, releasing mobs, as you're going through that rhythm, second account, create a gatherer. Um, after about 12 hours of gathering, you should be making about 100k an hour, I would assume. You should be being able to pull in about 100k an hour. Uh, after about 10 hours of farming, you'll have easy over a million gold in, in regs. Uh, brand new character. Just go start chopping trees. That's all you need. Highly recommend tracking. And I highly recommend majory so you can teleport. Uh, but really, just play smart. You'll be fine. Uh, let's see here. So once you get this, from your aspect perspective, let's talk the aspects. Um... <clears throat> Command is the top dog. Command is top dog for pets because it gives you follower damage bonus, 5% plus 1.5 per level. It gives you follower damage resistance. Your pets do more damage. Your pets take less damage. Follower, follower experience to gain and taming chance. That's right. It's easier to tame monsters with this. The high-end monsters, you want high-end command makes it so much easier to tame the big monsters so this is the taming aspect here is your problem these cores right here if you don't know the taint the aspect system essentially to unlock it it requires three materials two of these little vial things that they're called distillerations uh, four of these green chicken nuggets right here, which are called cores, aspect cores, aspect distills or distillerations. And this right here is referred to as an aspect kit. Um, this is what it requires to unlock the ability to be at tier zero. Once you're at tier zero, play with the command core turned on. Once you get this experience bar level filled up, then you can pay one more distill and two more core nuggets to go to tier one. 
and it increases uh, the amount of experience required and the amount of reagents required will increase. Um, once you unlock it, it'll always be distills and it'll always be cores to increase it. Um, in case you did not know, uh, let's see here. So if you go to the uh, uoutlands.com, go to the wiki and go to Aspect Mastery, it, they write all about it right here. Pwn Scar, uh, Pwn Scar, Pwn Star, bleh, Pwn Star, Pwn Star. He's got a video right here, you can click on it. I know, I'm a nerd. Uh, anyways, so it explains how the system works, all the fun stuff. Uh, explains the unlock cost right here. Specifically, this is what I wanted to show y'all. So again, after you unlock to go from tier zero to tier one requires 500 experience. So require one distill and two cores. One distill, two cores for go from one to two, one to three, one to four. And all of a sudden it starts to ramp. Two, three, two, four, two, five, three, seven, four, ten, five, fifteen, six, twenty. Go from 12 to 13 it requires 20 cores. To 12 to 13 requires 30 cores. 13 to 14 is 40 cores. And 50 cores. A lot of fucking cores. Here's how many cores you are going to accumulate over time. This is in total. So, if you want to go to level 10, you're going to need 43 cores. I can push a new aspect because of where my chain is. It's, I've only got... Uh, 14 links, I just got my 14 link, but the, two, the, the 14 links, uh, tw 13 and 14 are empty right now. So 10 links and taming damage. Um, I can push zero to 10 in a day you know, on as a tamer. I did it the other day for fortune, fortune aspect. The command cores are 150,000 gold per core. 150,000 gold. Per core. That's right. It's just math. But I just told you I can get there in a day. And in one day I need 43. I'm going to need 6.5 million gold for one day's worth of farming. Yes, yes, you can buy them over time. Yes, yes, blah, 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 blah. Setting expectations very early, very often. Command is expensive. We're going to go to outlandsmalls.com. Command aspect course. We're going to search for them. 150, 150, 155 for a few cores. If we're getting into it, 160. You should be looking to spend about 160 thousand dollars, uh, 160 thousand gold per core, be about average, right? These are gonna go very fast. So now, so that that's the that's the armor. Obviously, the weapon, uh, weapons and armor level at the same rate. It's just which which one do you want to apply to your weapon? What they do want to apply to your armor. If you go one uh, different ones on each, right? Uh, fire weapon, command armor. Uh, this is just for your spell to apply it to a spell book. Just apply it to a uh, dagger. Um, all th all of them are the same, right? Uh, they're not separate levels or anything like that. If you put two of them on a different on the weapon and a different on the armor. The, let's say you get 10 experience on the kill, it'll go 5 experience into each, so it split levels them. You don't get 10 in both. Um, but read up on aspect. Anyways, uh, the weapon, just to cover it, uh, essentially it heals your monsters. Uh, when it procs, it heals them very much. And then it, it gives you a large damage bonus of 2,000 damage plus 200 damage uh, per level. Um, to your pets as a as a damage pool, and your pets will then do 50% damage until that damage is done, um, and that damage stacks, uh, and the pool will stack. So if you proc and then you proc again, 
the overall total pull stacks, you'll continue to do 50% damage. Um, or until five minutes has run out. It's okay. I know what you're thinking. That oh, sounds like a lot of damage. It's okay. Fire, in my mind, is the best one for direct damage. Um, it does 900 damage plus nine, uh, 90 per, per tier. So command from an overall damage output is over two times that, which is kind of batshit when you say it out loud. But this will do it all up front versus 50% damage over time. Uh, command's nice because it gives you a huge damage buff and allows you to just kind of mow through mobs. So, yeah, I don't know. Anywho, uh, the command armor is the best. It's top tier. Let's talk about substitutions. Water. Water will increase weapon special, which is that thing that you need for your fencing to crit. Uh, it's a lower defense. That's 5% per uh, plus another 1.5 per tier. A tier 10, that's 20%. Um, so it'll be 15 for the extra plus the 5, so 20 Bonus to healing damage and uh, to healing dealt and receive, so you can heal your pets more, and you will be able to heal yourself more. 10% plus 3% per level, so at level 10, that's 40% additional healing. That's batshit. Alchemy skill increase. Six plus six to alchemy plus two uh, per tier, so 26 alchemy at tier 10. Why do you care about alchemy? Alchemy will give you more healing. For your healing potion you only have veterinary ability and potions to heal yourself very very strong makes you very tanky makes the player a lot more tanky um not as it doesn't increase your damage at all this is this is a no increase of dps uh stat but it's very good for controlling um your pets earlier on when they're very squishy uh it'll very it'll much make that happen water 13,000 gold a core. 13,000 gold a core. You're saving 150, 143 to 150,000 gold per core. So, not bad. Not bad. Hey, you can buy 10 of them right here for 140. You can buy 10 of these cheaper, and you can buy one. So, uh,. If you don't mind the damage inconsistencies um, and you don't really care, some notables, uh, let's see, air is pretty decent. It's really good for, uh, it's, it's still kind of expensive, but air is really good for melee later in the game and for non-tamers, artisan, don't do it. Blood would be interesting, I don't recommend it. Death, don't recommend it. Discipline, don't really recommend it. Earth would make you very tanky, the tamer very tanky because you'll just stand there uh and have increased uh damage resistance i don't really recommend it uh eldritch no no fire fire is good fire, fire is a very good thing if you want to try to increase your damage a little bit but water is better uh fortune would be a very if you don't want mind doing something semi-expensive but if you're going to do Fortune, I recommend just doing Command. At least get Command to Tier 10 first. Uh, but Fortune increases Gold Chance, Loot Chance, uh, Chance for uh, Damage Increase. That's just for you, not for your pets. And Global Experience Bonus, so you get more experience. I like Fortune. Um, that's what I've been playing with lately. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, gadget doesn't apply. Harvest doesn't apply. This is for Gathering. If you get into Gathering... There's a thing in the game for effective skill harvesting stuff. So, yeah, none of this really applies. None of this applies. Um, so, water. Go water. If, if you're really committed to taming, uh, if you're really committed to taming, I would probably go water. Uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Just probably just go command. The problem is, is you're going to want to get your melee weapon up a little bit higher. Uh, and, and I think that's where water is not bad. But if you're willing to fork in the damage, if you're going to play this game a lot, just go, command, just go, man. Just eat the cost, man. Eat the cost. What's that? 
uh, ten, 10 dungeon dives on a low-level character on just pure gold alone. I mean, you saw it. I got a research map, so that's a third of a core already. So and those cores will drop. You'll get a command core. So just fucking do it. Go command. Uh, don't be a bitch. Uh, I'm just going to say it. Don't be a bitch. But if you're feeling very poor and the game's very daunting, just go water. All right. Uh, the mastery chain. Um, don't worry about it if you're watching this video. You haven't made it there yet. Uh, if you're an established rich boy, just go buy follower damage links. Ten of gold. What are you doing? Why are you even listening to me? Just watch Bone Star video. Get the cliff notes and go. Um, trying to think. There's probably some other stuff to dive into as far as... Pet, pet positioning if you really want to get into it ball scene and stuff like that but that's not going to be for here this is this is to get y'all going so you can farm dungeons and i think we've covered that so you've made it this far and you've listened to me ramble thank you oh fuck me there is one thing <clears throat> the zoo we need to talk about the zoo so it was just at, it was just added on friday uh, so it hasn't even been in the game for a, uh, for a week yet. So hence why I almost forgot about it. So let's go talk to it real quick. So we're going to go to the stable. And if you're like me and you really like getting into this whole taming the pets and all this, you're going to like this. So over here we now have the creature broker. Uh, the creature broker will have these are all of the pets for sale on the test server it's the test server that there's multiple pages for sale these are the individual pets and when you click on the view listings like eldritch drakes view listing these are the eldritch drakes that are for sale right here these are their hits their speed their level yada yada yada, yada. Uh, if they have hues apparently it'll show their hues and how much the player is selling them for. You can pick up some pretty... You can pick up some cheap pets. Holy shit! Options. Sounds. The horses are fucking up in this stable. Jesus. Well, you know I'm making a YouTube video? So, this is really cool. Um, And now they've got the... Oh, sorry. Forgot. Uh... Bracket Zoo? Bracket Zoology. Bracket Zoology. And it'll open up your zoology. And so while you're playing Pokemon and you decide to catch them all, um, are these listed filter by name? Uh, the vampire bats, I am at, right now, I am at 7% vampire bats. Um, it used to be the old bestiary codex is you used to have to level up 20-something different pets. And every pet would give you a point. You'd have to level up 20 pets just to get your 20 points. No longer the case anymore. Obviously, I've gotten 7% of the experience just for my vampire bats. And in my bestiary codex, I'm already level 3 out of 20. Only 17 to go, and I'm 25% done. One dungeon run, we're almost 4 points in. That's nutty. This is, Get your bestiary codex, you'll knock this out in like 2 days. Easy. One day if you're, if you're a real gamer. Uh, but no, with your stable progress, as you play with various pets... Uh, you will earn additional stable slots per pet that you level up. So there's obviously a lot of pets in the game, right? 12 pages worth. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 15 times 10, 150. So, plus another two-ish, so uh, 100, 180, we'll take five off, 175 pets in the game, so 100 extra set, 175 extra stable slots that you can get. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, so there's that. Um, I, I seriously, I hope y'all like it. I do hope y'all like it. Please, 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 uh, do the gathering while this is happening. Do the gathering while this is happening. Buy the bestiary codex first. Fencing codex second. Go into the skills. I would highly recommend getting uh, animal taming and animal lore to 120. Animal taming, animal lore to 120. That's your your next step. Uh, I would get. Honestly, I'd probably get vet to 120. Third, get your skill orbs. Do your extra 60 points. Uh, th then at that point, all the other stuff will be down to 80. Then get your uh, your herding up to 120. Herding's gonna be big. Keeping your pets alive is bigger. That's kind of how I view it. Honestly, I might I take that back. Get the herding up first. Get the herding to 120, and then do animal team, and then do vet. Uh, 120 vet last. Because uh, we seem to be able to heal our pets pretty decently right now. Um, the faster you kill the monsters, the less damage they do. Therefore, vis a vis, concordedly, this makes sense. All right, guys, this has been Leginus's ultimate taming guide. I hope y'all like it. I seriously do. I hope this brings uh, more tamers to the server so that I can make something that's anti-tamer and then counter everyone on the server. But for then, I'm going to keep doing the meta and I'm going to keep playing this. This is the OG Animal Tamer. Been playing it since the pre uh, before the taming patch. Playing it all summer long. I absolutely love this build. It's fucking phenomenal. And it's so much stronger now that it's all been buffed. Like and subscribe the video if you like it. Leave comments down below. Tell me what I forgot. Tell me what I missed. Let's start a conversation around this. If you really disliked how long this was, dislike my combo. I'll take the engagement nonetheless. But what, whatever you do, don't do anything. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in Outlands. Don't forget to farm your uh, Gilded Lanterns coming up. Gilded Lanterns, Gilded Lanterns, Gilded Lanterns.